let's take our proper places. The uh, the regular committee hearing of the Committee on Transportation will uh, start. The 30th regular meeting of the Committee on Transportation is now called to order. Please rise for the invocation, and may I request the Honorable uh, Arogansha to lead the opening prayer. Please stand. Uh, let us bow our heads and put ourselves in the most holy presence of God. Almighty Father, thank you for safely gathering us today as we continue to perform our mandates and duties. Make me, this make us worthy of your, of your blessings despite our shortcomings and failure to live up to your expectations. We humbly explore, once again, your divine presence in today's meeting as we tackle the important matters in our agenda. Lend us your wisdom to fully grasp the pertinent issues and concerns that may be raised in the course of our deliberation and act accordingly. Inspire us always to serve with sincerity in utmost enthusiasm for the good of our nation. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please take seats. Thank you, Honorable Arrogancia. Next part of the agenda is the roll call of members. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. Chair. There's a motion to so to dispense with the calling of the roll. Uh, Julie is seconded. Hearing no objection, uh, the motion is approved. The next part of the agenda would be the uh, acknowledgement of members of the committee present. We have this morning the presence of the Honorable uh, Ramon Rodrigo Gutierrez representing one rider party list, the Honorable uh, Bonifacio Busita, representing one rider party list, the Honorable Renante Arugancia, one of our vice chairperson, and representing the third district province of Quezon, the Honorable uh, Joel Archua, representing the third district city of Manila, national capital region and the Honorable uh, Siriaco B. Gato, Jr., uh, Chairman of the Committee on Health and representing the Lone District, the province of Batanes. Magandang umaga po sa inyo at marami pong salamat. Comsec, please uh, acknowledge the, the resource persons present in this morning's hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for today's meeting, we have the following resource persons present. From the Department of Transportation, we have Undersecretary Rainier Paul Yebra, Assistant Secretary Jose F. Lim, and Assistant Secretary Jesus Nathaniel Martin Gonzalez. From the Land Transportation Office, we have Assistant Secretary Vigor Mendoza, Director Francis Ray Almora, Ms. Clarissa G. Uximer, Ms. Kathleen Diana Talayog, Mr. Richard Cortez, Mr. Joseph Paul Pitilia, Mr. Claudio Bunsol Jr., Attorney Serge Daphne Osita Angustia, Attorney Greg Pua Jr., Mr. Edwin Lopez, Mr. Ronald Bilang, Ms. Marivic Lopez, and Mr. Eduardo de Guzman. From the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, we have Attorney uh, the Chairman, Attorney Chofilo Guadis III, and Executive Director, Attorney Robert Keg. From the Office for, <coughs> uh, from the Department of Budget and Management, we have Mr. Mark James Evangelista, Chief Budget Management Specialist. From the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Engineer Ariel De Inla. From the Department of Interior and Local Government, we have uh, Ms. Debbie Torres, uh, Mr. Daniel Caminade, and Ms. 
Saibel Araneta. From the Department of Information and Communications Technology, we have Director Vazer Kerol and Ms. Julina Cinco. From the Commission on Audit, we have Attorney Melissa San Miguel Salunga, Ms. Marivy Canasa, and Ms. Cherry B. Alacon. From the Philippine Competition Commission, we have Attorney Ramon Jeriel Sawit and Attorney Smile Yu. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, we have Attorney RJ Bernal and Attorney Pamela Lorraine Ramos. From the Bureau of Internal Revenue, we have Attorney Ron Michael Uy. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, we have Attorney Lea Irao and Attorney Erica Serrano. Also, we have Ms. Maria Teresa Chiano, Attorney Jill Iris Ram Ramirez for BSP. For the Bureau of Treasury, we have Maria Erica Reyes and Anjipo Gao Ponce. We also have Director Robert Mariano. And Mr. Roland, uh, from the Land Bank of the Philippines, we have Ronaldo Averion, Ms. Lisra Hizon, Ms. Gian Baby Laika Dimailig, and Ms. Ruth Mendoza. And the Government Procurement and Policy Board, we have Mr. J. Mar Baring. And from the pri private sector, uh, Mr. Chair, we have stakeholders the following. From ACTO, Ms. Liberty De Luna and Mr. Renato Loma. From Alto Dap, we have Mr. Melencio Boy Vargas. From ANCAS, we have Attorney Jauro Castro. From CodeX, we have Mr. Alpha Martinez and Mr. Perlito Gonzalez. From Dermalog, we have Mr. Phil Dunkel, Mr. Bernard Dew, Mr. Nick Jude Torres, Attorney Anthony Peralta, Attorney Robert Roberto Consunhe, and Ms. Mr. Maximilian Weber. From Digital Pinoy's, we have Mr. Ronaldo Gostillo. From FedJudap, we have Mr. Jeffraim Guchanko. From Goldgate, we have Mr. Nick Torres and Attorney Raymond Fortun. From Grab, we have Mr. Kurt Sendana. From Joyride, we have Mr. Noli Iala and Mr. Rico Mineses. From Lalamob, we have Attorney Joy Caneba. From Lawyers for Commuter Safety and Protection, we have Attorney Noel Valerio. From Manibela, we have Mr. Mara Valbuena. From Motorcycle Philippines Federation, we have Mr. Lito Ligaspe. From National Public Transport Coalition, Mr. Ari Lim. From Nagkakaisang Sama ng Pangasiwa ng Panawigang Bus sa Pilipinas, we have Mr. Giovanni Simondak. From Pasang Masda, we have Mr. Roberto Kaobit Martin. From Paynamex, we have Mr. Ronaldo Magleo. Chief Technology Officer. From Petcoa, we have Mr. Bernardo Chang. From Real Time Data Management Service Inc., we have Mr. Ramon Makatimpag. <coughs> From Riders Centro, we have Mr. Jan J. Chan. From Speed Power Tech Solutions, we have Edgardo Garcia Jr. and Ms. Maria Carisa Garcia. From Stop and Go Coalition, we have Mr. Saldi Ping Ai and Mr. Eugene Avila. From Stradcom, we have Sir Anthony Kiambao, uh, Ms. Rodora Ipak, Attorney Eric Pilapil, and Attorney Lizel Chico. From, we have the Regional Director of LTO, also Mr. Chair. Um, from Region 2, OIC RD Manuel Baricawa. Region 3, RD Mon Ronnie Montejo. Region 5, R.D. Francisco Ranches Jr. and LTO uh, Carr, Attorney Jose Villacorta, and Attorney Jesse Balago. Uh, that's all for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Comsec.
And before we proceed further, the chair would acknowledge the uh, presence of the Honorable Wilter Palma, uh, one of our deputy majority leaders and representing the first district province of Sambuanga, Sibugay. Welcome to Hawaii, sir. Uh, for the next part of the agenda, the, the opening remarks of the chair, chairman, uh, my distinguished colleagues, members of the Committee on Transportation, and all our honorable guests, a pleasant good morning. Thank you for joining us in today's meeting as we deliberate on several measures and issues concerning land transportation. The agenda for today includes consideration of the report of the technical working group tasked to harmonize and come up with a bill in substitution of several measures seeking the regulation of motorcycles for hire. The second agenda is we will get an update of the Department of Transportation on the implementation of the fuel subsidy program. And third, the continuation of the inquiry into the implementation of the land transportation management system of the land transportation office. For the first topic regarding the regulation of motorcycles for hire, I just would like to emphasize that this measure has been considered a legislative priority of the House. This is in response to the pronouncement of our President, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., which was echoed by our Speaker, Speaker Ferdinand Martin Robaldes, to legalize and expand the operation of motorcycle taxis. <clears throat> Again, I would like to stress that the lack of efficient public transportation paved the way for the proliferation of motorcycle taxis as an alternative mode of moving people. Despite the safety concerns and other operational issues, our ordinary commuters patronize motorcycle taxis over other modes of public transport. Our Filipino commuters do so, not only because these motorcycle taxis are cheaper and more accessible, but also because they wish to avoid the stressful and time-consuming traffic in several urban areas. However, let me stress that coming up with these measures is not a simple task. There are a lot of things to consider particularly on the issues of safety, security, and economic viability, considering the impact of motorcycle taxis to other modes of transportation. A similar proposal was also passed during the previous Congress, and I believe that the same was duly considered by the technical working group in crafting the substitute bill that we will del deliberate on today. For the second item, we'll ask the DOTR to give us a report and update on the implementation of the fuel subsidy program. The fuel subsidy program, otherwise known as the Pantawid Pasada program, started in 2019 and aimed to provide targeted, targeted relief to the public transport sector to cushion the impact of the rising fuel price prices. The program was originally intended for public utility vehicles. In 2022, this was expanded to cover other affected transport stakeholders like the tricycles and delivery services. Lately, however, there were numerous complaints regarding the program as several transport groups claimed that they were not given the subsidy for the year 2023. Based on the report submitted by the DOTR to the committee, we have the following rele relevant data. Out of the three billion appropriated under the 2023 General Appropriations Act, the LTFRB only disbursed 1.244 billion 901,669 pesos and five centavos or 41.50%, representing 172,932 units of public utility vehicles. 
for the delivery services under the implementation of the Department of Information and Communications Technology and Department of Trade and Industry, only 6% of the total amount of 180 million has been credited. This represents 8,672 of the 150,000 beneficiaries. For the tricycles, which are under the Department of the Interior and Local Government, only 15% of the 930 million allocation has been credited. The figure represents 137,002 out of the 930,000 beneficiaries. It is already 2024, and with these figures I have mentioned, the, co the committee demands from the government agencies concerned the reasons to justify the very low utilization rate. We also want to know the issues and the challenges that hinder the expeditious implementation of the program. We have invited the LTFRB, the DDTI, the ICT, the ILG, and Land Bank for this matter. And for our last item, we will continue with our inquiry regarding the implementation of the LTMS, or the Land Transportation Management System, which is the subject matter of the privileged speech and House resolution filed by the Honorable Bernadette Herrera. <clears throat> During our last meeting on this matter, the DICT committed to intervene between the parties and make a report to the committee on the progress regarding the technical and legal issues that prevent the smooth transition of LT LTMS from Dermalog to LTO. We reopened this inquiry after several revelations surfaced during our meeting last February 2024. What we initially thought was a simple turnover situation appears to be a complicated controversy as reflected in the November 7, 2023 result of the technical evaluation and inspection of the COA and audit on the LTMS contract. The COA report cited several significant findings that include, among others, non-compliance of the technical aspects of the items delivered by Dermalog, delayed and incomplete deliveries despite complete payment, unlawful extension of contract period, premature issuance of certificate of completion and acceptance, unclear LTO specifications under the terms of reference, violation of the IRR of Republic Act 9184, otherwise known as the Government Procurement Reform Act, pertaining to the modification or amendment of the contract, lack of interconnectivity between LTO and other government agencies, exclusion in the contract of off-site backup facility which is vital in LTO implementation and operations, non-compliance of Dermalog to comply with some of the contract requirements for the core systems, two-year delay in the delivery of motor vehicle inspection report system to the public portal, failure to provide the 60-month or five-year on-site support, and lastly, failure to deploy project management within the duration of the contract. As I've stated, these are parts of the report of OWA. While we understand that this matter has been referred by the LTO to the Office of the Ombudsman for Appropriate Action, the committee will continue its inquiry to find the truth behind the issues in order to come up with necessary recommendations to improve the procurement system and address policy gaps when needed. So, without further ado, let us proceed with our first item, which is uh, a consideration of the technical working group report on motorcycles for higher bills. And I would like to call on the Honorable Ramon Rodrigo Gutierrez, one of the principal authors of the measure, to present the TWG report for and on behalf of the TWG chairperson, uh, Vice Chair Tina Pancho, 
And you have the floor, Honorable Gutierrez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Before consideration of the TWG, as a principal author of uh, House Bill 3412, which is subject of said TWG, <clears throat> I would like to express our gratitude to the House leadership led by Speaker Martin Romualdez for having uh, put this as a legislative priority. I would also like to extend our thanks and gratitude to Chair um, Akop for uh, heeding the call of the President and immediately scheduling this for consideration. With that said, Mr. Chair, on behalf of uh, Committee Vice Chair Tina Pancho, Chairperson of the TWG, it is my distinct honor and privilege to present today the report for the Technical Working Group on the draft substitute bill on regulating the operation of motorcycles for hire. Copies of this report, I believe, have been distributed by the COMSEC to all members, and I will only be um, going through it very uh, briefly in summary. So, Mr. Chair, the report of the Technical Working Group is anchored on the following principles, passenger safety and security, accessibility, viability and healthy competition, and job generation. This bill extends not only to motorcycle taxis, but to also to those areas without digital platforms. So we are also considering for habal habals. And of course, this also refers to motorcycles operating as private express and or messengerial delivery service regulated by the DICT. Amongst the provisions of which were more or less threshed in specifics are first, for example, section three on the definition of terms. Some of the terms such as digital platform were made to conform with definitions in other acts, such as the Internet Transactions Act 2023. They also con pushed for the consideration of motorcycle for hire, not only as a common carrier, but as a public utility vehicle. They also moved for changes from transportation network company to the term motorcycle taxi platform provider to clarify possible confusion with existing TNCs in the regulatory framework. For section five, there was also a suggestion which was adopted by the TWG to require extraordinary diligence instead of mere diligence on the part of the MP MTPP or OEPP, considering the active part in accreditation and supervision of operators and riders. On section eight, on the authority to grant franchise or permit to operate motorcycles for hire, it is important to note that it is now divided into three, of which this was based on the uh, most of house bills concerned. The motorcycles for hire operating under MTPP, the authority shall be vested with the LTFRB. For motorcycles for hire in areas without digital platforms, that being MTPP or OEPP, jurisdiction is vested with the LGUs. And for OEPPs, it will be uh, this will be regulated by the DICT in accordance with the provisions on PEMEDES. For Section 9, on the requirements for the grant of franchise or certificate of public convenience or operator's permit, an important issue that was tackled was that of multi-homing. And although there were two sides to this argument, a compromise was reached in which they allowed for a maximum of two apps to be made for multi-homing. On the citizenship requirement, it was made an express requirement that there would be proof of citizenship for the riders. And that for the on Section 10, qualifications for motorcycle for hire riders, that professional driver's license be required. For Section 11, as a consequence of classifying motorcycle for hire as a public utility vehicle, it was imperative to express provision on, requiring, on the requirement for proof of Filipino citizenship. On, sections, on Section 12, on the operation of motorcycles for hire, it was uh, also included for the accountability or liability of multi-homing, which was already discussed prior. And uh, Mr. Chair, these are the contents in general, in summary, of the report of the Technical Working Group. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, as uh, is the protocol, uh, the the, uh, <clears throat> the committee will go line by line in so far as uh, the uh, substitute bill is concerned. Uh, <clears throat> this is primarily for the reason that it will educate uh, this chair and uh, the chairman of the TWD uh, when uh, they will defend the substitute bill in the plenary session. So, under Section 1, uh, this act shall be known as the Motorcycles for Hire Act. Are we agreed in so far as the title of the substitute bill is concerned? The OTR? No, 
no objections to this. So far as section one of the uh, substitute bill is concerned, <coughs> we defer to the guidance of the Mr. Chair. We have no objection, Mr. Chair. From the other resource persons, do you have any comment? Hearing none, so we go to section two, declaration of policy. Uh, and I would just like to read, the state recognizes the importance of transportation in economic development. The recent innovations in technology has opened an opportunity for alternative modes of public conveyance, such as motorcycles for hire, to thrive as a reliable and accessible mode of transportation. However, despite its promise of convenience and fast service, it must be regulated to ensure that the interest of the general public is protected. Thus, the state shall allow the regulated operation of motorcycles for hire to provide the public with an alternative mode of public transportation which is sufficient, safe, secure, and economical. Towards this end, the state shall establish mechanisms and guidelines in regulating all the operational aspects of motorcycles for hire. In all so, motorcycles. Are there any Comments from our resource persons in the cycle. So far as the declaration of policies from concerned? our resource persons. Mr. Chair, in the so far as the uh, Attorney Guadis is recognized. Uh, we just would like to make a uh, comment since it in uh, para in uh, line three it says alternative mode of public uh, conveyance. Uh, since this will now be another uh, mode of public transport. May we suggest that the word alternative be changed to additional mode of public conveyance? Just our simple uh, proposal, Mr. Chair. Any objection to the proposal? No objection, the members of the technical working group? No objection. No objection to the part of the TWG, Mr. Chair. Okay. Yes, uh, Jose Kebra is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If we're going to change the word alternative in line five, Mr. Chair, then we suggest to also change the word alternative in line 11 for uniformity, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yeah, line 11, this is the term. Yeah. Any other comments from the resource persons? None? So we go to the next. Uh, Your Honor, please. Yes, please identify yourself. Uh, Roberto Martin Po, Kawabit ng Pasang Master, Your Honor. You have the floor. Paki ulit, sir, Your Honor. You have the floor. Pwede ka na mo siya dito. Uh, tungkol po dun sa motorcycle taxi, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Chair, palagay ko ho, sa dami ho ng modern transportasyon ngayon, tama na ho siguro yung andyan ng uh, motorcycle taxi. Huwag na ho tayong magdagdag. Sapagkat uh, napakabigat na ho ng mga sitwasyon namin sa ngayon. Lahat po kami ay naapektuhan sa public transport, sa PUJ, even buses, taxis. All of us are being affected by this motorcycle taxi. Anya na nga po, Mr. Chair, yung door-to-door. -door. From uh, sa bahay po, lagi po sa trabaho, nawawala na rin po ng hanap po yung ating mga kasama sa hanap po yung tatlong gulong na tricycle. So kahapon po ay nagkaroon kami ng pagpupulong sa MMDA, sa Senate Chairman Don uh, Mr. Martin, let me cut you there. Yes, sir. Nandito na po tayo sa uh, uh, pagtakel approval ng uh, substitute bill. You sh were you not invited sa technical working group? Hindi po kami naimbitahan, uh, oh. Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, may yes. we ask the ComSec to verify if uh, 
Uh, we'll verify the record, sir. Baka hindi lang naka-attend si uh, Mr. Robert Martin. But we invited the uh, public uh, transport, sir. Uh, Jeepneys. Uh, Mr. Chair, we did not receive any invitation from the technical working group regarding this bill. Kasi, uh, Mr. Martin, uh, dapat nangyari pa yan dun sa technical working group. Kasi ang dinidiscuss na natin ngayon is line by line uh, provision of the substitute bill. We are under section 2, the declaration of policy. Ang sinasabi po ninyo, hindi na po kailangan ang motorcycle taxi for hire. Yun po yung inyong gist. Hindi, hindi po ba? Po, hindi na po, Mr. Chair, kaklaro, hindi na po dapat magdadag, magdagdag yung existing na po, tama na po sa karasanin. Ano po yung sinasabi po yung existing? Meron akong mga existing... Uh, That's only part of the pilot study for your information. Pilot study pa lang yung tatlo, yung angkas, move it, at saka joyride. Pero sa, Now, we are putting it into law. Yun ang nangyayari. Pilot study pa lang yun. Pilot study na supposedly to last six months, pero na-extend na na-extend in so many years already. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, kanya po aming uh, sinasabi sa inyo po ngayon, dahil nga yung pilot study na yan, marami na po sila sa ngayon. Yung tatlong uh, motorcycle taxi na yan. At uh, sa amin pong pagkakaalam, at naipaparting po namin sa, sa, sa inyo, Mr. Chair, meron pa mga pending applicants tungkol po dito. Kanya po, kami po ay uh, humihiling sa, sa committee ito, sa inyo pong pamumuno, na yung existing na motorcycle taxi, eh tama na po yun. Alam niyo po ba yung coverage ng pilot study? Iyan niya po, Mr. Chair, Hindi ang nga. problema namin. Ang sa sagutin mo yung tanong ko. Umiiwas ka kaagad eh. Hindi po. Uh, I do not have time kasi sa, sa dami ng agenda ngayon, nag-aalala lang ako na hindi matatapos itong araw na ito eh. Pero yung sinasabi po ninyo, nagre-reklamo kayo, marami ng masyado, bakit? Doon po ba sa, sa Antipolo, sa Rizal, marami na rin ba ito? Doon po sa Sarangani, marami na rin po ba ito? Or are you speaking only of Metro Manila? Metro Manila po. Yes. Kasi nandito yung inyo. Di ba? Ang kinukonsider lang ninyo, yung sarili ninyong lugar. Uh, Mr. Chair, meron din po kami mga kabahaging uh, kasapian sa mga lugar na inyo pong binato. Yeah, I know. Pero ang, uh, ang problema kasi is uh, sa premise na we do not have enough or a reliable public transport system. Di ba? Would you agree with that? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, mm, opo, pero yun niya po ang dahilan sa nabangit po niyo kangina, hindi po ko inaimbitan sa technical working group. Kasi sa, sa, sa mga probinsya, wala naman ito eh. It is only in three places. Uh, Metro Manila, Davao, and Cebu. Ito. At may kap po yung kwan. Uh, uh, bawat lugar. Uh, 45,000 in Metro Manila, 9,000 in uh, Cebu, 9,000 in Davao. Yun po yung number for your information. Kaya nga, sinabihan ko yung LTFRB, if ever this, uh, this bill will be enacted into law, Uh, pag-aralan yung tapping system ng bawat lugar where motorcycle taxis will operate. Yes, the Honorable Chu is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Chair, I think uh, the concern of uh, Kaobet eh hindi po dapat dito tinatakil. It should be tackled in the Metro Manila development. So, kasi po, what we are tackling right now is the motorcycle taxi na nagkakonsern po sa buong Pilipinas. So, hindi naman natin po dito nakalagay yung limited na ano lang eh. 
but of course I understand the concern of uh, uh, Obet um, but I think uh, para makaabante po tayo tingin ko hindi po ito yung proper forum just my take Mr. Chair Mr. Chair Thank you uh, Honorable uh, Chua yun nga po yung kwanko eh kasi ayaw ko naman i-declare na out of order si Mr. Martin kasi it's already outside the topic that we're going to we're discussing this morning Yes, the Honorable Rodrigo uh, uh, Gutierrez is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, just on this point, siguro po, no? Um, although we're still verifying the attendance of our representatives from the uh, jeepney sector, um, this notion is not novel, and in fact, I believe the TLOG tackled it under Section 8. So perhaps, Mr. Chair, may I suggest that we consider such uh, um, points when it comes to the in consideration of the LPTRP by the DOTR and the LTFRB? By which point I think that issue would be tackled, Mr. Chair. What you're trying to say, Your Honor, is that we will tackle it when we go to Section 8. Mr. Chair, I believe if the rules of procedure will be following is line by line, yes. I think it would be properly addressed at that point. Thank, Thank you. Wala kang objection doon, Mr. Martin. Yung issue mo will be tackled when we tackle Section 8 of the bill. Thank you. Uh, your honor. Any other comments? In so far as uh, Section 2, Declaration of Policy is concerned? None. So we go to Section 3. Definition of terms. So uh, may I ask the body if there are questions about the definition of terms under Section 3? Or if there are other terms which should be included to be defined under this bill? Yes, ma'am. Please identify yourself. Um, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is Attorney Kanyaba po from Lala Move. Uh, just point of clarification for the definition of MTPP. Um, is this referring to the carriage of passenger only? Um, and if so, maybe we can specify it clearly as such. Uh, because if we go to um, section F, 3F, on OEPP, if you look at the definition, um, as far as, let's say, a platform like Lalo Move that facilitates the connection of delivery riders to a user who needs uh, logistics transport, it may not be to facilitate a sale of a goods or products. So I wanted to clarify if that's the intention. MTPP only for carriage of goods and OEPP would refer to the carriage of cargo uh, because this is relevant to, I think, the later section where OEPP will fall under the ICT and MTPP will fall under LTFRB jurisdiction. Mr. Chair, on behalf of the DOBG, I believe that it was um, specifically defined as such to consider both Pono because the MTPP, there are some apps, for instance, that would also have a delivery service component. So as compared to Lazada and Shopee, who are supposed to be um, linkages between buyer and seller, dun po sila mapupunta sa OEPP. So I think MTPP, as defined, would actually also consider carriage of goods when such apps consider them, Mr. Chair. Does that answer your uh, query, Madam? Uh, further clarification, sir. Yes. Um, if, MT if, if that's the, um, the answer, sir, MTPP for platform that does delivery only, then um, we will be considered under MTPP, correct, um, Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Chair, depending on the um, business model, I suppose, if I'm not mistaken, Lazada. Lalo move, sir. Mr. Chair, for Lala Move, the business model would be directly dealing with consumers for con delivery of goods. Tama po ba? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So between sender and uh, receiver? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Facilitating po. It's similar to a carriage mm. of passenger, only it's only goods specifically. Mr. Chair, uh, I stand corrected. I now understand where they're coming from. Akala ko po ito sa Lazada. So that would be OEPP. So the distinction is uh, warranted between, because um, um, the 
usage of facilitate a contract of carriage under the light of which uh, the context that they're now explaining might be interpreted as carriage of goods also, of which, which should fall under the ICP. So with that, Mr. Chair, I think they are hinting at a amendment. Is that correct, Mr. Chair? That's correct, Paul, Mr. Chairman. So Mr. Chair, with that, I think it would be okay. If I may, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, for the definition, uh, a motorcycle taxi uh, platform provider applies to those uh, catering uh, passengers. Although there are MTPPs uh, which also caters uh, cater goods like like the Grab, they have passengers. They have uh, so it it will fall under MTPP. But for purely goods and parcels, uh, it will fall under uh, online e-commerce platform provider, Mr. Chair. Clear na po. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I be recognized on the same issue? Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, the uh, representative from Lazada says carriage of goods for the MTPP. Because when you say carriage of goods, that becomes now transportation of goods. They now assume the identity of a common carrier. If that is the case, then the supervision over them would now fall under LTFRB because carriage of goods is the... Uh, and uh, task of a common carrier and common carriers are under LTFRB, so it would no longer fall under the ICT. That is my take. And there should be a distinction, Mr. Chair, between carriage of goods and parcel. Parcel po yan yung mga pagkain. Goods would refer to as correctly defined rectangular box with a appropriate dimension and weight. So... On that point also, I'd like to make a distinction, Mr. Chair, later on. But we'll go first to the carriage of goods. I would suggest, Mr. Chair, that at a later point, we designate the carriage of goods to the jurisdiction of the LTFRB. Since goods, carriage of goods are the task of common carriers, and common carriers are with LTFRB. The, 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 the current situation is that yung carriage of goods eh, under the ICT yung apps, di ba? The ICT. Um, Mr. Chair, um, remedies po yung um, so more of parcels and mga letters under the ICT. Under the ICT. Carriage. So ano ang kwan ng the accreditation of uh, these companies such as LBC, DHL are with LTFRB since uh, the uh, carriage of goods fall within the definition of a common carrier. Yeah. And since these are common carriers, the supervision over them, the accreditation is with LTFRB. It is only the connectivity that is under the supervision of the DIC. That is our take, Mr. Chair. May, may I request uh, the ICT and the uh, LTFRB to come up with your amendments to the definitions? Yes, Mr. Chair, we will, Mr. Chair. To have a more definite definition of these, uh, these phrases? Yes, Mr. Chair, we will uh, confer with them on a, on a separate meeting and then come up with our proposal to your office, Mr. Chair. The, the, the schedule for the approval of this in the uh, in this committee is next week. So can you do that? Can you submit your your amendments uh, before Wednesday next week? By Monday, if uh, we can have the meeting tomorrow with the DICT, we should be ready by Monday, Mr. Chair. Uh, would that be okay with the uh, with the TWG group? Thank you. So, any other 
clarification on the definition of terms? Mr. Chair, we, we have some more clarifications, Mr. Yes, Chair. Yes, you have the floor. Uh, on letter B, motorcycle refers to any two-wheeled motor vehicle without appendages. May we know from the uh, EWG of the house if we refer here to the internal combustion engine which is common among our motorcycles or do this include the e-bikes because e-bikes are also considered as two-wheeled motor vehicles, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, if the definition of the two-wheeled motor vehicles by the LTFRB would include e-vehicles, then I think this would just be in reference lang po, no? to whatever definition that they would have. Um, admittedly, when the TWG considered this, what we have in consideration are the, uh, the um, traditional uh, internal combustion engine powered motor vehicles. But to afford that flexibility, it was only defined as such, such that it may make in reference to the definition by the LTO. So should the LTO, the LTFRB, decide to open up? Because uh, under the system that we have proposed, the registration would still be with the LTFRB. So if they would then consider with this definition, yung e-vehicles, that they would be giving out yung uh, registration, it would fall up under the um, agency, Mr. Chair. But to answer the question, Mr. Chair, in consideration of this, it's about... Um, Flexibility. Would you agree, uh, LTFRB? Kasi kayo ang eh. Mr. Chair? Yes, Two. yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, because in addition, in the actual practice po on the ground, the current um, delivery apps would actually also include sometimes bicycles, sometimes they would have um, delivery service na naglalakad. So I think the flexibility there is what is being afforded by this definition, Mr. Chair. But may I? You agree? We would have a comment on that because we are here discussing about uh, MC taxi. So, yung sinasabi po ni nila sir na naglalakad sir may not fall uh, no, under the uh, law anymore. So, ang gusto lang namin malaman sir is if in your definition, isasama po ba natin ang e-bike, sir? Or are uh, we just limited to the internal combustion engine? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, so to answer that, po, no, just to clarify, the mentioning of yung bicycle or yung naglalakad was just to give an idea of the, the scope of these uh, MTPPs and o uh, OEPPs. So in consideration of that, in the question only of whether ICE is uh, limited to that, it is not limited, Mr. Chair. The definition stands, motorcycle refers to any two-wheeled motor vehicle without appendages. So should the LTFRB then consider in relation to section um, seven on standards, if they would then consider e-vehicles to be part, then it would be interpreted that way, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, ang, ang fear po natin is if we limit it to ICE only now and in technology improves and e-vehicles are then considered a normal mode, then we would be hamstringed again, Mr. Chair. We concur, Mr. Chair. We agree with the observation. Uh, uh, Chairman, yes, if you Mr. look at Chair. Section 7 uh, of the bill, kasi matatakil natin yan because nakalagay dun yung standards and specifications of motorcycles for hire. Di ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Siguro, doon ka na mag-raise ng issue. Noted po, Mr. Chair. Yes po, Mr. Chair. Di ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Before we proceed, uh, please allow me to recognize the presence of the Honorable uh, Robert Raymond Estrella, representing uh, a bono party list. Welcome po kayo. So, any other... Uh, issue in so far as Section 3, definition of terms, uh, is concerned. Mr. Chair, may I again be recognized? Please. On the definition of operator as against rider, operator re in the definition it refers to person in whose name the motorcycle for hire is registered, while rider refers to the person who is driving the motorcycle for hire. In the concept of an MC taxi, the rider is itself the operator so i think this should be merged together in our own uh, suggestion mr chair uh, mr chair the consideration of the the history here 
was that there was actually a one measure that proposed that an, a single operator may have a multiple fleet. But seeing as we are now adopting a one rider, one operator uh, framework, I think that is a welcome uh, suggestion, Mr. Chair. Well, we haven't come to that uh, point yet where we will approve the uh, one, one, uh, one rider, one vehicle, or mo one motorcycle. We have not come to that yet. Maybe we'll discuss that when we, in the, in the sections, uh, in the coming sections, we will be able to see that. Uh, agreed, Mr. Chair. In that case, a contingent na lang po siya. Yes. No? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Lim. Yeah. Doon po sa section uh, 16, uh, ito pong uh, letter E. Multi-homing repairs on approach where operator may accredit particular motorcycle for hire to more than motorcycle platform. Mr. Chair, matagal na namin sinasabi. Section ano? Uh, section uh, seven, ano po? Section 16, Mr. Chair? Section 16? Ano? Uh, line 16, uh, E. Section 3 po. Uh, section 3, letter E. Yeah po, po. Oh. tama po. Yeah. Oh, ano ang issue mo rito? Eh? Ito pong multi-homing multi na naman. Kasi po, noong pa po namin sinasabi sa mga pass hearings natin na yung pong multi, uh, multi sa ito po isa po motorcycle uh, taxi passengers po, ah, yung nagmamaneho, na dapat po hindi po mapayag at hindi pinapayagang palipat-lipat yung isang driver sa tatlo o lipito o anong, anong kumpanya. Kasi po ang nangyayari po ngayon, Kaya po hanggang ngayon hindi maibigay sa atin yung numbers of motorcycle uh, taxi na tumatakbo because nagmumultay homing nga po. Ibig sabihin po, Mr. Chair, pag ako po ay nasa, nasa grab o nasa move it, pwede po ako lumipat sa angkas, pwede ako lumipat sa joyride. So dito po nagkakaroon kami ng problema dahil pag tinatanong namin ilang ba talaga ang dapat na tumatakbo, 45,000, hindi daw po napupuno dahil sa multi homing. So namatay na po yung uh, ipinaglaban natin na kaya tayo naglagay ng motorcycle taxi para makatulong doon sa mga walang trabaho. Mapuno yung 45, para po, mabilang din namin kung hanggang 45,000 lang ang kailangan tumakbo sa Metro Manila. Mr. Chair, may I be recognized? Because we're just on the definition of terms. I think that can be best tackled later on the subsequent provisions. May we suggest that we just stick to the definition of the terminologies initially, Mr. Chair, to just to proceed with our discussion. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lim, definition pa lang ito. Ang pinag-usapan, may objection ka ba sa pag-define ng multi-homing? Apa po. After po siguro. Nabanggit ko lang po dahil nakita ko na ayoko makaligtaan. Baka hindi ako mabalikan. Thank you. Mas matanda naman siguro ako sa iyo eh. Kaya mas uh, matatandaan mo kasi sa akin. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Chair, I'm sorry. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yes, please identify yourself. Uh, Ronald Gustilo po from Digital Pinoy's. From? Digital Pinoy's po. Yes, you have the floor. clarify lang po ako, Mr. Chair, doon po sa Section 3, uh, Letter C, kung yung food po ba ay uh, kasama na rin po doon sa goods, hindi po kasi nababanggit dito sa, uh, sa bill yung pong, uh, food delivery. Nandun lang po tayo sa goods and yung passengers. Mr. Chair, I think I can answer that because you just designated me with the DICT to come up with our definition of goods and parcel, which we will submit to you by Monday. I think that can be best addressed at a later time if no. DICT and I can thresh out the matter. You can state the, the definition that you have. Yung, you can answer the query of the good gentleman there. Yes, uh, good, good morning, sir. The matter that you raise right now will be thrashed out in a separate meeting with the DICT for us to be able to thresh out the distinction between goods and parcel. Because if the delivery is for goods, it comes within the ambit of the LTFRB as a common carrier. But if this is a parcel, uh, it will now be under the DICT. Now we just have to distinguish now with the DICT what are considered as goods, what will be considered as parcels. Then we can define now and delineate the functions of each department. Can that you submit that before Wednesday also? Of course, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any, any, uh, 
question on this, uh, yung mga membro ng TWG? Because uh, the ICT and the uh, uh, LTFRB will come up with definition kung ano yung goods, ano yung food parcels. Okay, thank you. Any other issue? Section 3. Uh, Mr. Chair, last issue for Section 3. In the definition of motorcycle for hire, it refers to motorcycle duly registered as such under this act and used to carry passenger or goods on a for hire basis. May we suggest that the word instead of for hire uh, for a fee or compensation, which is a more uh, detailed term rather than for hire, if the committee will accept. For a uh, fee? Section 3. See, yeah. yung definition po ng motorcycle for hire. Yeah. Instead goods. of for hire on goods on a for a fee or compensation. Fee or compensation? Yes, because this is delivery, so it's for a fee or a compensation. If Yun lang pong sa amin. That's just our take Chair, from LTFRB. May we ask, Mr. Chair, the uh, representative of LTFRB, what would be the implications between these two definitions? Just for the clarity of all the members here, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, Paul Austria, uh, Mr. Chair from LTFRB. Now, just to distinguish po yung ibig sabihin ng for, uh, for hire, and for a fee or compensation. Now, one of the uh, pagpukas ay sinabing for hire, ibig sabihin, yun pong motor ay, or yung vehicle, hina-hire. Now, for sometimes po, ginagamit po kasi yan, based on our experience, uh, the passengers would claim that they did not hire the vehicle. Only, uh, nagbayad lang po sila ng panggas, nag-contribute po sila ng panggas, pang-tol. So, uh, in that case po, nandun po yung difference. Although, technically, it is the same effect. Uh, we just believe that yung pong for a fee or compensation is more appropriate po. Yes, the Honorable Joe has recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, but hindi po natin isama lahat for hire or for a fee or for compensation. So, para kung ano man yung interpretation ng kung sino man yung ano, at least pasok lahat. Huh? Uh, yes. Mr. Chair? Mr. Chairman, I think Representative Chua is correct. Uh, it doesn't matter kung ano yung natanggap ng vehicle o yung driver. Sa tingin ko, eh, for gas, para sa toll gate o hinire, eh, gagamitin din niya yung oras at saka yung sasakyan para ibiyahe ang isang sasakyan, di ba? So, let's not split hairs. Let's just call it, basta pag in-engage mo na yung servisyo ng particular service. Diba? Any service. Yes, we agree. You you are a lawyer, right? Yes, Mr. Chair. What is the legal difference between for hire and for a fee? Technically, Your Honor, none except that yung sa in the parlance of the transport industry, pag sinabing for hire, you hire the entire motor vehicle. In some instances, kasi sir, kinokontrata lang, binabayaran lang yung gasolina. So, to make it more specific, nilalagay na lang namin a fee or compensation. But technically, pareho po yan, Mr. Chair. So we submit to the uh, discretion of the Chair. Uh, see, I do not see. I do not see any difference between for hire and for a fee. We submit, Mr. Chair. Simply, simply lang yung pinagtatalunan natin. Uh, maybe you can... You can place that in your IRR, di ba? Kasi ang yes, provision of law ngayon itong pag-usapan natin eh. We we submit, we agree, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So, 
any any uh, issue section under section 3 or ltfrb wala na po mr chair yes uh, please identify yourself a uh, good morning george halandoni po of ub express alliance uh, under codex din po yeah what is your well, uh, ch mr chair uh, nakalagay po kasi sa motorcycle for hire natin na uh, definition is used to carry passengers. Hindi po specifically isa lang yung pasahero. So siguro ay, uh, uh, I wish to imply na baka kasi ma, kung hindi siya ma specifically malagay na isa lang ang sakay uh, because of this kind of definition, baka magsakay ito na mas marami na nangyayari ngayon sa mga motorcycle natin. So, siguro, uh, uh, yun lang naman po yung uh, pinapoint out ko kung sa definition, dapat lang ilagay na isa lang po yung pasahero. LTFRB? Mr. Comment. Chair, this is just a matter of semantics. We agree because in the concept of a motorcycle taxi, dapat talaga isa lang ang pasahero, yes. Mr. Chair. Even if you ask the manufacturers, ang motorcycle, isang uh, rider, isang sakay lang. Yes, Mr. Chair. Di ba? Ay, definitely, Mr. Chair. May meron nga batas na kwan eh. Maski yung umaangkas, hindi pwede yung tao na hindi umaabot yung paa niya dun sa footrest. There's a law. Author nga ako nun eh. Di ba? Meron din nagsasabi dun sa batas na yon. Bawal yung cellphone. Pero nakikita mo ngayon yung mga delivery kwan, nandun yung cellphone sa harap. In violation of that law. Yes, that's the anti-distracting law, yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, anti-distracted driving act. Author ako nun eh. Ayun po. Diba? Ayun. So, any other issue? So, we go to the next section. Uh, for the information of everybody, if we cannot finish uh, tackling the uh, provisions, we stop at 12.30 for you to take lunch, and then we resume at 1 o'clock. Kasi marami ng comment na ang pangit daw tinitignan yung mga resource persons sa mga congressmen ay sumusubo habang uh, habang nagkakaroon ng hearing. So, para wala na silang masabi, we suspend at 12.30, we eat lunch, and then we resume at 1 o'clock. Okay? Para walang masabi na yung mga nanonood po sa atin. So, we go to section uh, 4, the scope and application. This act shall apply to all aspects of the operation of motorcycles used as a common carrier, very specific, common carrier, for the transportation of passengers or goods. For this purpose, goods shall include parcels and mail. This act shall not apply to motorcycles directly owned by entities and used exclusively in the line of business for delivery of goods and other services. Any comment, LTFRB? For Section 4, Mr. Chair, we have no comment. Masasettle nyo na yung issue yung jurisdiction ng parcels at saka kwan goods? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, we reserve the comment at a later time after our meeting with the ICT, uh, preferably Friday or Monday, Mr. Chair. Any comments from uh, the service providers? Dito sa scope and application, wala kayong issue? Okay, hearing none, we go to the next. Section 5, uh, motorcycles for hire as common carriers. The operation of motorcycles for hire as imbued with, is imbued with public interest. As such, the same shall be governed by the applicable provisions of the Civil Code of the Philippines and other pertinent laws, rules, and regulations on common carriers, particularly on the required degree of diligence to be observed in the course of transporting passengers or goods 
and on the presumption of culpability in case of breach of, con of a contract of carriage, MTPPs and OEPPs should exercise extraordinary diligence in the accreditation and supervision of motorcycle for hire operators and riders operating under their platforms. LTFRB, DOTR, any? <coughs> Mr. Chair, may I again comment on this? It is, number one, Mr. Chair, it is suggested that uh, uh, the first sentence, which starts with the operation and ends with contract of carriage, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, should be one paragraph, because this refers to the operation of the motorcycle taxi, while the subsequent sentence, MTPP and OE, that starts with the word, uh, MTPP and OEPP should be second paragraph because this refers to the supervision of MTPP and OEPP. Yun lang, sir. Uh, we have other observations, Mr. Chair. Number one, in the exercise of the diligence. In the accreditation, Mr. Chair, this should only be a regular uh, diligence. But in the supervision, of the motorcycle for hire the uh, operators this is where the extraordinary extraordinary diligence should come in so there should be a demarcation line sir sa pag accredit regular diligence sa supervision extraordinary diligence mr chair uh, cwg group Mr. Chair, um, on that point, no, I think the distinction of whether or not we should include in one paragraph, I think um, we are open to that suggestion and to highlight the difference between the two. So we, the TDLG would gladly accept that. But Mr. Chair, on the consideration of extraordinary diligence in accreditation supervision, may we ask Mr. Chair, the LTFRB, uh, how come, uh, what is the basis for the notion that accreditation should only be ordinary diligence? Mr. Chair, sa accreditation kasi, you only approve the application of the person. The person comes to you with an application, so you accredit him as your rider. However, in the day-to-day -day operations, you see to it that this rider performs his functions in accordance with the law in what I call the diligence as far as not only the diligence of a good father of a family, but diligence as far as human foresight can see that should apply in the supervision of this motorcycle for hire operators yung day-to-day -day operations na ho, dapat doon pumasok yung extraordinary diligence that is just our take mr chair mr chair uh, while i understand the apprehension of the ltfrb it is uh, at least in the opinion of us as members of TWG, that extraordinary yeah. diligence should also include accreditation mr chair because i believe that a lot of um, harm can be avoided with extra measures when it comes to accreditation. Um, we, we want to prevent accidents. Mahira po siguro, Mr. Chair, if we only allow for ordinary diligence and accreditation and then only exert extraordinary due diligence, uh, extraordinary diligence on supervision. So that's just m the standard of TWG, but of course we leave it open to the body if they would agree. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Thank you. The famous uh, SK Australia is recognized. Uh, I have just one comment. Tama yung sinabi ni Representative Gutierrez. Uh, mas importante rin kasi yung accreditation. Doon tayo nagkakaproblema eh. Bawa meron tayong gustong i-blacklist na rider. Galing po sa isang kumpanya. Habitual, notorious, this might pose a danger to the riding public. Now, siyempre, tatanggalin po ng kumpanya. Sabihin nila, o oh, ito, rider na to, si Arogansya. Example lang, ah. example ka lang. Hindi ah. ko naman sinabi. Example lang. Siya ho ay madalas nahuhuli, natitikitan dahil uh, beating the red light, mapasok po sa one way, reckless reckless driving. Siyempre, pag tinanggal po ng isang kumpanya, let's say company A, tinanggal na si Arogansya, 
eh mag apply sa company B. Doon dapat ang extraordinary diligence ng accreditation. Makikita, bakit ka ba tinanggal sa company A na pinanggalingan mo? Yun lang ho. Eh, ipapakita nyo yung record. So, if you just accredit and accredit, pasok kayo ng pasok, ay hindi ho pwede. Pati ho yung riding community na tinatawag nilang mga kamote riders, talagang hindi ho natin pwede mag-proliferate dito sa ating kalsada. Magkakaroon ho tayo ng anarchy. Yun lang, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, from the service providers, kasi kayo ang kwan dito, affected. Any comments? Wala. Uh, Attorney Guadis, one of your objectives, uh, doon nga sa inyong kwan eh, uh, uh, TWG, di ba? Your number one objective is uh, passenger safety and security. Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, bakit kayo sumisiway doon? The more or the stricter yung uh, ating uh, criteria, hindi ba ba mas maganda para sa riding public? We submit, Mr. Chair, the... the uh... Kasi taking into consideration the statistics, the most number of accidents, motorcycle, the most number of fatal accidents, motorcycle, so, why can't we exercise extraordinary diligence lahat ng aspeto ng motorcycle, motorcycle taxi for hire? Di ba? We submit to the wisdom of the chair. We, we agree with Mr. Chair. No, that's chair. not my wisdom. That's my opinion. Agree po ako, Mr. Chair. Eh, kasi from the very start, alam mo naman na Ang number one consideration ko rito sa, sa bill na ito is always the safety of the passengers. Yun yung pang. Kasi, uh, uh, data-driven yung aking kwan eh. Number one na uh, accident, motorcycle. At saka kayo, na, nakikita nyo naman yung kwan eh. Hindi pagsunot ng mga motorcycle uh, riders natin sa ating batas eh. Oh, hey, why don't we come up with stricter measures to control this in order to ensure the safety of our passengers? Hmm? I agree, Mr. Chair. Thank you. The Honorable uh, Salvador Plato, representing the 6th District Province of Bulacan, is recognized. Thank you. So, we go to Section 6. Uh, uh, Comsec, uh, before we proceed to that, please take note of the uh, of the observation of uh, the LTFRB in so far as paragraphing is concerned. Mr. Chair? Yes, the Honorable Chua is recognized. Thank you, but uh, Mr. Chair, I totally agree with your observation and the observation of uh, Congressman Estrella. In fact, if we will read the first paragraph of Section 5, it says, the operation of motorcycles for her is imbued with public interest. Hence, we should take extra precautionary measures in accrediting uh, MTPPs and OEPPs. Dahil yun na nga po yung point eh. It is imbued with public interest. Thank you, Your Honor. So we go to Section 6. <clears throat> registration of motorcycles for hire. A motorcycle intended to be used as a motorcycle for hire must be duly reg registered with the Land Transportation Office in accordance with the requir requirements set forth in Section 7 of this Act. The LTO shall ensure the wo roadworthiness of all motorcycles for hire before their registrations or any renewal thereof. LTFRB, comment? For Section 6, we have no comment, Mr. Chair. 
the service providers? No comment? Uh, may I ask the TWG, uh, under Section 6, we're ensuring the roadworthiness of the vehicle, right? Yes, Mr. Chair. How about the, uh, the, the capacity of the rider? Mr. Is Chair, there a section in this uh, substitute bill which uh, governs this situation? Yes, Mr. Chair, I believe that would be part and parcel of the requirement on the professional driver's license, Mr. Chair. So we believe that the standards of a rider would be laid out by the standards of a professional driver's license, while the standards of a motorcycle would be covered by uh, Section 6, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So we go now to Section 7. The standards and specifications of motorcycles for hire. The Department of Transportation, upon the recommendation of the Department of Trade and Industry and LTO, shall prescribe in the implementing rules and regulations the standards and specifications of motorcycles that may be allowed to operate as motorcycles for hire, taking into consideration the safety of the passengers and riders in the protection of goods. No modifications shall be made on any motorcycle for hire except for the installation of the appropriate accessories such as motorcycle bracket, top box, luggage carrier, saddlebag, step, stepboard or footrest, speed limiter or monitoring devices in accordance with the standards and specifications prescribed by the DTI and as approved by the LTO under existing laws, rules, and regulations. Comment? Yes, Mr. <coughs> Chair. We have comment on uh, line number 21 of section 7, uh, which says that uh, the uh, Department of Transportation, upon the recommendation of the DTI and LTO, we believe, Mr. Chair, that the LTFRB should be included here since it's the lead agency in the uh, implementation of the motorcycle taxi. I think the, the LTFRB was omitted, Mr. Chair. Just our observation. Likewise, in line 30, which says that as prescribed by DTI and as approved by LTO, I think LTFRB should likewise be included since, uh, again, our argument is that we are the lead agency in the motorcycle taxi. Mr. Chair? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, on that regard, po, I think the wisdom of uh, the uh, underlying reasoning for Section 7 only referring to uh, DTI and LTO was that it's referring to the standards of the motorcycles. Po, no? So generally, our understanding of how the DOTR works is that the LTO is concerned with registration, renewals, and then the LTFRB with young uh, franchises. So it was our opinion that when it comes to at least the standards and renewal and registration of motorcycles, this would fall under the ambit of the DT, uh, of the LTO, and the DTI would come in because there is consideration of accessories and parts that they may purchase. However, if the LTFRB would like to take that additional um, responsibility, I think this uh, represent uh, the TWG would be would more than welcome their inclusion, Mr. Chair. We submit to the chair, Mr. We submit to the wisdom of the. But for us, since uh, we believe that uh, we are the lead agency here, I think our uh, thoughts on the matter, our input should likewise be taken into consideration. Mr. Chair, with that, I think for the TWG, we would like to now include the LTFRB since they have stepped up to the challenge, Mr. Chair. The. the, the uh, Obligation rests on the Department of Transportation uh, with the, the recommendations coming from DTI, LTO, and LTFRB. Yun po ang gusto ninyo. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, any objection from uh, the TWG? None, Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, if I may. The Honorable Busita is recognized. 
Mr. Chair, under Section 7, Line 26, no, modi no modification shall be made on any motorcycle for hire except for the installation of the appropriate accessories such as motorcycle bracket. Mr. Chair, pwede po bang idagdag natin dito yung uh, cross guards? Cross guard. Sa line 7, line 27, Mr. Chair, cross guards. Mr. Chair, if I may um, add to that, yung crash guard po is uh, the uh, accessory that helps protect yung engine parts. It's installed to the side. So if it, f if it is uh, approved by DTI, I think it would, the TLG would be of the opinion that the uh, suggestion of the Honorable Busita is a welcome one, Mr. Chair. DTI, did you get the issue? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, we will check if there are PNS uh, uh, available for the crash guard. But for now, we have uh, standards already published for the uh, top box. Um, if I may mention, sir, the uh, standards we have already promulgated, there, there are only uh, two or three for the accessories. Um, first, we have um, for the top box and for the uh, lighting, lighting light, light uh, signaling devices for the uh, accessories. For the uh, for the uh, other accessories, sir, we will uh, check with our officer the other standards. Mr. Chair, in that case, po, no, perhaps we could, if we would be, if the committee would be like-minded to include crash guard in the such as provision, lang naman so that it would be uh, provided for, then I believe the DTI would be, um, by law, they would now be forced to provide the standards of which would be uh, appropriate, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, DTI, uh, when this, this bill will be inducted to a law, into a law, kailangan magkaroon na kayo ng <coughs> standards and specifications dun sa mga accessories. Kasi magi, kung maging batas ito, mandatory na sa inyo. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chair, I will, uh, I will uh, raise the, uh, uh, the, the, the issue to our office. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, the Honorable Australia is recognized. Meron lang ako isang gustong itanong. Hindi ko lang kung sa LTFRB o sa DTI o saan ano or sa mga kasama nating service provider. Now, uh, sinabi nyo yung standards ng motorcycle. Masasali rin ba dito yung power ng makina? Di ba? Kasi alam nyo, uh, meron mga kagaya kung medyo overweight. Siyempre, pag humangkas ako, tas medyo maliit yung kapasidad ng makina ng motorsiklo, Eh baka yung may mga pataas tayo, eh hindi ho kayanin. Pag pinilit nyo naman, uusok yun. Now, uh, meron na ba kayong naiisip kung ano ang minimum natin na uh, power in terms of CC nung ating motorsiklong gagamitin? Isang point ko yon. Isa pang point. Siyempre, dadating yung araw na may mga talagang importanteng gustong makarating sa kanilang paroroonan, papayagan ba natin maging magkaroon ng mga malalaking motorsiklo na para pwedeng dumaan sa skyway o sa expressway ang for hire na to? Ganun din man na pinayagan nyo na ang taxi, pinayagan nyo na ang jeep, pinayagan nyo na ang bus dumaan sa mga highway. Itong for hire na to, total, binigyan nyo ng prangkisa Papayagan niya ba sa balang araw, dumaan ito sa skyway, dumaan ito sa highway? Eh kung sa ganun, eh ano hong kapasidad ng motorsiklo? Alam ko sa expressway, bawal ang less than 400cc. Di ba? Tama ako. Eh, anyway, uh, yun lang ho ang gusto kong malaman. Kasi we are now looking forward. We are uh, future-proofing our law na sasabihin nila, eh bakit naisip nyo? Habang buhay ba sa side street na lang o sa main thoroughfares dadaan ang motorsiklo? Hindi ba kung binigyan nyo sila ng prangkisa, bibigyan nyo rin sila ng karapatan na gamitin yung ating daan? Kagaya ng bus, taxi, jeep, e pwede silang dumaan sa mga expressway at skyway. So, uh, Attorney Guadis, 
Ano ba ho ang inyong masasabi doon sa obserbasyon na iyon? Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. You have uh, rightly observed on that that I think the CC should likewise be incorporated in the law. The, maxim, the minimum required uh, CC of a motorcycle. We agree with the observations of uh, Congressman Strelia. So, uh, Attorney Guades, you want it specified in the law? At least the... In the yung kayo ang magdedetermine sa IRR? I think it's better if it is in the IRR so okay. there can be some flexibility, Mr. Chair. Sabi mo kasi, ilagay dito eh. That's why I'm asking you. Normally kasi, uh, since you are the experts and so far as these things are concerned, iniiwan namin sa inyo yung flexibility na yun eh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And yes, we agree. But if you want agree. that uh, we... We uh, provide this in, to, in this uh, law, uh, itong bill na magiging batas, eh, in the future, kung kailangan may pagbabago because of situations and circumstances, may hirapan na tayo because we have to amend the law. You have correctly observed, Mr. Chair. I agree with you that it should be in the implementing rules and regulations. Thank you. Before we proceed, the... Uh, let me uh, acknowledge the presence of the Honorable uh, Wilbert T. Lee, representing uh, uh, Partilis Agri Agra na reforma para sa magsasaka ng Pilipinas. Magandang umaga po. So, any other issue in so far as Section 7 is concerned? Yes, uh, you can, you have the floor. Yes, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, we have um, some comments on the last sentence of Section 7 with your in indulgence. Um, in the second paragraph, uh, line uh, 29 to, to the last uh, number, Yeah. Uh, in accordance with the um, standards and, and specifications prescribed by the DTI and shall be used as referenced by the LTO in their regulations uh, with your indulgence, uh, Mr. Chair. Ano ang gusto mo mabago rito, Iho? Um, <clears throat> just to uh, just to make uh, just to make clear, sir, that the standards are being um, prescribed by the DTI and the um, and the uh, regulations are being issued by the LTO for the for your indulgence, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, sorry, just for clarity, po, no, can we know which words are to be stricken out and what words are to be added? Because I think the first and second time, iba po yung wording po ng ating representative of DTI. Kasi nakalagay dito, uh, in accordance with the standards and specifications prescribed by the DTI and as approved by the LTO. So, merong ambiguity rito eh. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, in line 30, sir, we, we could uh, omit uh, from, we, we could replace and as approved by the LTO under existing laws, etc. And uh, write instead uh, um, and shall be used by the LTO, uh, yeah, sorry, and shall be used as referenced by the LTO in their red regulations. Mr. Chair, so the effect would be prescribed by the DTI. And shall be used as referenced by the LTO in their regulations. So no approval from the LTO, but the LTO will adopt what the DTI prescribes. Is that the position of the DTI, Mr. Chair? Um, meaning, uh, Mr. Uh, Your, Your Honor, uh, we will just uh, we will just be um, promulgating the standards, and the LTO shall use them in their existing uh, uh, um. yes, sir. Mr. Chair, may may we ask Mr. Chair the LTO for their opinion on that uh, type of framework? May we be allowed to study the words? I am not comfortable with the suggestion of the good gentleman, Mr. Chair. 
LTO, uh, I Ms. think Mr. you will... Mr. Chair, if I may, um, uh, we also share the same sentiment that we are not comfortable with that change precisely before Republic Act 4136 uh, prescribes that the LTO shall set the standard in coordination with our mother agency, DOTR. Of course, we're always guided by the standards also set by the DTI on this matter, but it is not an automatic uh, automatic um, requirement that we apply everything that the DTI tells us what to apply. We may add to it or deduct depending on the guidance of the DOTR, DOTR Your Honor. May I know if uh, LTFRB and, uh, and uh, LTO has the, under its jurisdiction yung mag-prescribe ng specifications and standards? Under the law, do you have that mandate? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, under Executive Order 202, we have that mandate to prescribe certain standards for motor vehicles and likewise their classification. Uh, could you please explain to this uh, chair, uh, why does it need to be approved by LTO as prescribed by DTI? Uh, your other ours is uh, roadworthiness as prescribed by uh, Republic Act 4136. Uh, we are not sure as to the standards or, or requirements which DTI will factor in in determining the uh, the uh, usefulness of the accessories to be used in the motorcycle or the motorcycle itself. Um, the so the standards may be totally different, Your Honor, when roadworthiness is factored in already. I'm not sure whether that is the same standard used by DTI as far as accrediting so or approving LTO products. So has uh, standards for motorcycle bracket, top box, luggage carrier, saddlebag, stepboard, or footrest. Do you have standards for this already? Uh, your, your Mr. Chairman, right now we do not have standards for this. How can you approve something when you do not have these standards? Uh, Your Honor, the moment this becomes into law, we will have now to uh, consult with uh, DOTR on the matter in the setting of standards for motorcycle taxi, Your Honor. So, in cases where the standards of DTI would not coincide with the standards of LTO, what would happen? If I be your honor, um, I would believe that the more specific law would prevail. Um, thus, the Republic Act 4136 on roadworthiness would have to prevail over the uh, general supervision of DTI over products being sold in the country, your honor. DTI, what is your opinion? Uh, for now, your, uh, your your Honor, sir, we will uh, we will remain with this position because uh, this is already uh, uh, approved by our director in this uh, position uh, with regarding uh, Section Seven you know, on our comments. Thank you. Ah, uh, sige. Uh, that would delay the approval of this. Uh, may I ask the uh, LTFRB, you're the one conducting the pilot study of motorcycles for hire, Tama? Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, uh, should this, this issue not be part of your findings of the pilot study after six years? Uh, our pilot study is more uh, geared on the... And then, ang tanong ko is, should this not have been part of your study, of your pilot study? Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh. Ano ang kwan ninyo? So you want your standards to be followed, not the DTI? We will have to reconcile with the, the, the DTI on the standards, Mr. Chair, to harmonize both uh, their standards and the requirements under the motorcycle taxi. CWG? Mr. Chair, um, in light of this, uh, I wouldn't call it impasse, but um, perhaps 
so that the bill can move along we can come with uh, we can come up with uh, neutral terms perhaps maybe we could suggest with standards and specifications prescribed in coordination between DTI and LTO would that be something amenable or any other wording that they might suggest so that well what I would like to put forward is that at least future proofed itong bill a wording that would in essence mean that uh, it would pass standards and specifications prescribed by whatever other specific law so I don't know Mr. Chair if the body would be open to that but that would be the suggestion uh, I don't know with the DTI and the LTO uh, Mr. Chair as far as LTO is concerned we agree with the uh, proposed wording of this of this phrase then LTO and uh, DTI should come up with your amendments in so far as uh, the, the uh, lines uh, 29 up to 31 are concerned before Wednesday next week Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, the chair would acknowledge the presence of the Honorable uh, Kaimer Adan Olaso, uh, representing the first district, Sambuanga uh, del Sur, city of Sambuanga. Welcome, po kayo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, any other issue in so far as Section Seven is concerned, Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, sorry, may I clarify na lang po, no? So the current standing as with Comsec is that in accordance with the standards and specifications prescribed and as approved under existing laws, rules, and regulations, so that we leave it open, perhaps, Mr. Chair, for them to coordinate in whichever, whether that would be by a future law or a memo under the department, if it is so empowered by 4136, then perhaps we could just adopt that, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, actually, if I may segue very shortly this is a problem that actually we, we filed the bill previously because ang nakikita po namin minsan the DTI would allow sales of uh, accessories that would pass their standards as per international standards of course kaya in the DTI pero when it comes to the LTO it doesn't fit for example sa pipes minsan the DTIs would allow pipes which pag dating naman sa si LTO hindi pala pwede or when it comes to other accessories such as crash guards that although might pass a certain international standard, the dimensions naman would not fit with the LTO. So I really think they, this would have to, this is something that should be considered in the near future, but at least for the purposes of this bill, Mr. Chair, I would suggest that we leave it open in that manner, Mr. Chair. Uh, DTI and LTO have been directed to coordinate with one another vis-a-vis -vis lines 29 to 31. Before Wednesday. Okay, Mr. Chair. So whatever they might uh, suggest. Yeah. Then we'll... Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. So any other issue under Section 7? Wala na? Yes, Mr. Lim. Mr. Chair, at ang uh, comment ko lang po, ito po bang mga, mga uh, ina-accredit po ba yung mga materiales na ilalagay sa mga motor? Kasi this is what happened doon sa ating ibang... Uh, mga batas na naging issue yung accreditation. Diyan po kasi nagkakaroon ng red tape, Mr. Chair. Sorry po, pero yun ang katotohanan. Like yung seatbelt, uh, yung child seatbelt aklo. Yung pong kanyang seat, uh, ano kaya nagkaroon ng mga issue doon sa sasakyan na sasakyan ng mga bata dahil sa accreditation eh. So doon po, ako nasabi ko lang, I hope uh, some, uh, some of our honorable congressmen knows that. Thank you po. Any comment, DTI? Salamat po sa opportunity, Mr. Chair. Uh, with regard po to sa uh, materials uh, being used for um, parts ng motorcycle, ang amin lang po, ni, ang, ang amin lang po mandatory sa ngayon is yung uh, tube po ng gulong. Yung pong motorcycle tire po is on ongoing pa yung draft daw. Sa, sa amin kasi to be able to declare product mandatory, may tinatawag po kami na Department Administrative Order. Yung pong daw na nagsasama dun sa gulong para may isama sa mandatory, na public consultation na po namin yun and ongoing pa po yung pag-deliberate po nung draft daw. Pag na-approve po yun, masasama na po yung gulong din sa mga mandatory po na yung product. Yung nabagit po kanina na ano po, yung pong crash box, uh, wala pa po siyang standards sa ngayon. We will, we, will, uh, uh, we will also check with the office 
yung tapak sa mampo meron pong standard na na-promulgate. However, hindi pa po siya mandatory din. Yan yung mga other uh, accessories po na binabanggit. Uh, with regard po doon sa materials po na binana po, hindi po namin siya na-regulate. Doon naman po sa issue nung uh, car seats, uh, although ibang topic po ito, we have already declared the product mandatory as by, by, by our secretary as early as 2020. Naging mandatory po implementation on 2021. If I may uh, defer po sa ibang agencies po, uh, doon sa pag-implement lang po sa panghuli sa mga drivers po. But, um, all the ibang topic po, yung child car is already mandatory as early as 2020. Po. Salamat po. Thank you. Thank you. Any other issue under Section 7? Wala na? So we move to Section 8. Mahaba-haba ito. Uh, authority to grant franchise or permit to operate motorcycles for hire. The franchising or grant of authority to operate motorcycles for hire shall be as follows. Letter A, motorcycles for hire under MTPPs in metropolitan and urbanized areas with an existing and operating MTPPs. The authority and regulation of the operation of motorcycles for hire is vested in the LTFRB through a franchise or certificate of public convenience. The LTFRB shall set forth in the franchise the terms and conditions to be observed in the operation of motorcycles for hire. In determining the number of franchises to be issued, the LTFRB shall take into consideration the local public transportation route plan or studies approved by the DOTR and its impact on the other modes of public transportation. The franchise fee shall be determined by the LTFRB after public consultation and shall only be implemented upon the approval of the DOTR. So any questions or issues under paragraph A of section 8? LTFRB? None for paragraph A, Your Honor. We reserve our comments on the subsequent paragraphs, Your Honor. But for paragraph A, wala po. Yeah. Eh, susunod naman na i-discuss natin yung subsequent paragraphs. Eh. Note, noted po, Your Honor. Yes. Service providers, do you have any issue in so far as uh, paragraph A of section 8 is concerned? Yes, please identify yourself. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. I am uh, Mr. Orlando Marquez, the National President of Liga ng Transportasyon at Operator sa Pilipinas. Uh, yun pong prangkisa po kasi sa amin po sa jeepney, lalo na po, taxi, buses, UB Express, nakamoratorium po. Nagtataka kami dahil open po na resolvahin natin yung problema ng traffic, kaya lang po sana ang aming suggestion po, Nakabukas po yung motorcycle, pero yung pong mga jeepney namin, as I am the owner of the air-conditioned jeepney since 1997-2004, ay naging jumbo air-conditioned jeep ang inoperate ko sa Makati po, Your Honor. Kaya kami po ay gusto namin tumulong ho, lalong-lalo na ho sa inyo, sa gobyerno, na i-develop yung mass transport system. Kaso lang ho, kung nakikita namin, puro motorcycle, motorcycle, totoo po, kailangan natin. Food delivery, kailangan natin. Pero parang gawin na public utility vehicle na pampasahero, minsan dalawa pa ang sakay, siguro your honor, pag-usapan sana namin po, hihingi po ako ng audience po sa ating chairman ng LTFRB. Salamat po. LTFRB. Comments on the uh, comment of the good gentleman there? Uh, to be very candid, Mr. Chair, I think the comment is out of order because we are discussing about uh, Section 8, Letter A, which is a definition of motorcycle for hire. But yes, we, in some ways, we, we, we share the sentiment that uh, 
the motorcycle taxi is taking some of the passengers of the other public utility vehicles but iba po yung client base ng motorcycle taxi ito yung mga nagmamadali and from their house they go to the office the uh, for that for Mr. Uh, the good gentleman there ho mga PUV ho yan mga jeepneys iba rin po yung client base ho nila ito yung mga from terminal to the term another terminal po Mr. Chair the good gentleman has a request if he can have an audience with you would you grant it of course Mr. Chair uh, pwede po kayong magkipag-usap daw kay chairman ng LTFRB uh, thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, service providers, wala kayong problema dito sa... Okay. Uh, let's go to letter B under Section 8. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Sorry yes. po. Uh, Doon po sa pinag-uusapan kanina, ibalik ko lang. Kami po may problema rito sa pagbibigay ng franchise. Kasi po ang franchise nito... Kaya nang sinasabi ko, nakalagay po rito, LTFRB ang magbibigay. Pero always remember, ito pong mga ito, pag pinapasok natin outside Metro Manila, tatamaan na po nito yung mga tricycle sa area. So, ang pagbabasihan lang nila, LTPRP. E yung nga pong LTPRP sa PUBMP, hindi pa tapos eh. So, I think there is a problem here. Kaya gusto natin klaruhin, uh, baka po pag lumabas ito ng Metro Manila, aangal ang tricycle din, aangal ang mga jeep ni sa lugar. Especially kung may taxi like Cagayan de Oro, Cebu, Dabao, iba, Butuan. So kaya ako po tinatanong ito para klaro kung, kung uh, ito po bang uh, pagbibigay ng prangkisa nito is uh, kasama po sa pag-uusap yung local government units na kung saan ang tricycle po ay doon kumukuha ng franchise. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Lim, masyado kang mabilis eh. Oo. Kasi susu yung susunod, nandun yung issue mo eh. Uh, section B of Section 8, uh, Paragraph B of Section 8. Pabasahin ko para baka masagot yung katanungan mo. Ano? Thank you. Uh, letter B of Section 8, Paragraph B of Section 8, Motorcycles for hire in areas without an operating MTPP or OEPP. The authority and regulation of operation of motorcycles for hire in areas without an operating MTPP or OEPP is vested in the local government units through the issuance of an operator's permit. For, for routes within their jurisdiction, the operator's permit shall be issued by the city or municipality concerned. For routes traversing two or more cities or municipalities, the permit to operate shall be issued by the province of the component LGUs. In a case where a route traverses two or more cities or municipalities belonging to two or more provinces, the operator's permit may be secured from any of the provinces concerned, provided that the consent of the other province or provinces must be secured prior to operation. The LTFRB shall approve the, route, the routes and the number of units that may be allowed to operate as may be recommended by the LGUs in accordance with the LPTRP and shall provide for a uniform guidelines for uniform guidelines as to the standards of operation of motorcycles for hire in consultation with the LGUs and stakeholders and provided that in no case shall a road exceed a distance of more than 20 kilometers. Any LTFRB, any issue on this? Yes, Mr. Chair, we have uh, substantial comments on letter B. Uh, number one, it is the position of the LTFRB that the entire paragraph B should be deleted. On the entire paragraph? B. That, that's our opinion, your Mr. Chair, because the MC Taxi has no fixed route. MC Taxi is area-based and it is based on an application. So my our position is that this should be only up-based. So dapat po, sir, wala po itong 
para grabe especially yung sa in uh, num number two Mr. Chair is that the distance of 20 kilometers from the point of pickup to destination I think this should be clarified kung since application based po ito especially in Metro Manila they really traverse from one city to another city exceeding more than 20 kilometers I think this is best discussed in the IRR where we can define exactly kung papaano po yung yung uh, distance ng mga motorcycle taxis and number three I think iba, we should distinguish highly urbanized city of Metro Manila with the uh, other areas dapat iba ho yung applicable laws for the lowland provinces as against Metro Manila kasi po iba ho ang Ang, ang mechanics ng Metro Manila in terms of motorcycle taxi. That would be our observation, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, um, just for clarity, po, no, the underlying rationale for this having um, distinguished between paragraphs A and B is that we were looking for a compromise po, no, between the um, service providers who are regulated and provided for through these uh, apps and yung mga habal-habal, yung traditional po. So, hindi po siya naging locality-based, although there seems to be a um, tendency po, no? When we're highly urbanized, there that's where the apps are. When we go rural, doon naman po yung habal-habal. But we were look at it in a way na hindi po siya actually by locality. Kasi, Mr. Chair, um, plus the also in consideration, the, the distinction of the 20 kilometers and uh, how many routes shall be passed at uh, the traversal of the route that was also given as a um, how do we say uh, a compromise po, no? so that there's a distinction of what kind of uh, route or services is being provided by these habal habals now if we are to delete section b and follow the uh, proposal of the ldfrb i could be wrong but my understanding is that if we are going to make it locality based this is going to be very um granular because I'm not sure if we can say that it will only be locality based with the Metro Manila, uh, Greater Metro Manila area, or let's already include Cebu and Davao. But as far as I understand, our service providers are actually looking into reaching out to the other areas. So to have it locality based might be a confusion of jurisdiction by then. Although uh, we do understand and appreciate that by having it based on where the apps are and aren't, have their own set of challenges of defining the area. But we, we want to look forward. Uh, we are forward thinking in the sense that um, by future proofing this bill in consideration of further expansion, we've only made it a compromise between jurisdiction and where or where, where, or where, uh, where the app is or isn't. So, Mr. Chair, but if the body would be so inclined as to take that jurisdictional approach by territory, I think the TWG would agree, but as currently, that would entail um, a total rehashing of the bill. I think this is the substantial portion, com the substantial compromise that was reached with the T in the TWG. So that is something for the consideration of this body, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Asek Guadis. Uh, yes, sir. Itong, itong paragraph B would only uh, be or will apply for motorcycles for hire in areas without an operating MTPP or OAPP. Ano yung proposal mo na mag-govern doon sa areas na ito? Kasi pinapaalis mo itong provision na ito eh. Mr. Chair, ang concept po kasi ng MC taxi Hindi, ano is ang dahilan mo? What, what would be the governing uh, provision of law yung sitwasyon na ito? Kasi pina-i-raise mo eh. Pina-bubura mo ito. So what will we, what will govern this situation? Doon sa mga lugar na walang MTPP at saka OAPP, what law shall govern kung wala ito? Uh, Mr. Chair, ang motorcycle taxi kasi when it was designed, hindi, hindi, hindi po mo sinasagot based. asek yung katanungan ko eh. Kasi pinabubura mo ito, magiging bakante, di ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. And this governs a situation, right? 
Yes, Mr. Chair. Now, what Chair. law will govern this situation? Kasi pinabubura mo eh. What will take its place? In areas where there is no MTPP or OAPP. Our position is that MC taxis should only be used in areas where there are applications. Pagwala, Mr. Chair, I believe we should not allow motorcycle taxis. Kaya ho. Pake ulit, pake ulit. Our take, Mr. Chair, for LTFRB is that this should only be allowed. I mean, the provisions of motorcycle taxi uh, should only be allowed in areas where there are applications available, sir. Pag wala uh, pong mga internet, I think... Kung walang internet, there should be no motorcycle taxis or motorcycles for hire. Yun po ang na, sinasabi nyo? Yet, yes. Uh, uh, abogado po kayo, di po ba? Yes, Mr. Chair. Are those not supposed to be of general application? Yes, Mr. Chair. Do you are you implying a a classification to be provided by the law? What I would. Hindi. Sagutin mo muna yung tanong. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chair. I agree with you. Yes. Kasi you ah alam natin na our laws are supposed to be general in application. Para maging hindi general in application, there should be a valid classification, right? Yes, Mr. Chair. Oh, can you explain to this uh, committee na satisfy ba lahat yun? Uh, Mr. Chair, in I believe it is sati uh, satisfied, Mr. Chair, because the classification of an MC taxi is always application based. So, pag walang application, there should be distinction. Then, it should be another law or it should be another mode of transportation that should uh, govern in such areas. Okay, nga. What you're trying to tell us is the way I understand it is, inililimit mo yung motorcycles for hire in places only when there are MTPPs or OEPPs. Correct ba yung understanding ko? That is my uh, personal Hindi. opinion. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. That's my opinion, Mr. Chair. PWG? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, while we do understand, po, no, uh, now at least with the line of questioning by the chairman, we see the reasoning of the LTFRB. It is actually that they only want to cater to the uh, motorcycle taxi. Yung MTPPs na sinasabi po natin. Um, but while we respect the directive and position of the executive, I think as representative of the TOG and for the riders for that matter. Um, if you look at the title, actually we dropped already yung motor, uh, MC Taxi. We don't refer to this anymore solely as the MC Taxi Bill. It's Motorcycles for Hire. So precisely as a compromise with uh, the other uh, areas, our representatives are here from the different districts. Some of them have shared the opinion that uh, it's high time that yung mga traditional na habal-habal be regulated also. So, um, while there are merits on the part of the LTFRB to perhaps have it in two, distinct, two separate laws, uh, I think uh, most respectfully, this is within the ambit of the wisdom of Congress to decide. And as we have decided in the TWG, we have merged them into one. So, this is the current framework that we have provided. And I would most respectfully submit, Mr. Chair, uh, on the part of the TWG, that we still push through with this draft. Because to have the Habal Habal regulated separately, would mean a two-step approach again, should there be any changes in the future, should there be any changes to the model of how MC taxis work, yung MTPPs natin, then we'll have to study again how it would work with Habal Habal. But at least given this particular framework moving forward, I think as far as human uh, reason and foresight can see, uh, most respectfully, I think we're of the opinion that this is the way to go, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any comment from the Mr. service Chair. providers? Honor. Yes, you're recognized, uh, Sir Ayala. Uh, I'm Noli Ayala from Joyride, Your Honor. Um, una -una po, we totally um, respect the wisdom of uh, the TWG. Uh, we believe that the, um, the uh, interests of, er of all of the uh, parties have been taken into consideration with this draft bill. Uh, para ko lang masagot 
yung yung uh, yung uh, comments and also the suggestions of the LTFRB. Um, I wanted to just go back to the entire intention of the MC Taxi pilot study, uh, Your Honor. The intention was that it was going to provide an alternative mode of transportation that was technology-based and app-based. Um, it was supposed to be more accessible than hailing uh, in the streets um, because uh, they wanted to make it more efficient. And that is why, Your Honor, um, the three players that have been included in the pilot study were required by the TWG to create an app uh, based on um, technology that was existing. Um, so I think the LTFRB is coming from a position of maintaining this kind of um, uh, 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 differentiation from the current system, Your Honor, of uh, our transportation modes. Um, I can see, Your Honor, a an, an situation, for instance, where since technology cannot be boxed, it is very, very simple to uh, actually um, bring the technology to search several areas at a very short time. I can see an, uh, a situation, Your Honor, where um, there is a jurisdiction right now covered by Section B, of, uh, or rather, uh, Paragraph B of Section 8, that does not have an NTPP at the moment. However, because of technology, there can be an MTPP immediately in that area, Your Honor. And so there will be a conflict in this kind of situation. That is one, Your Honor. The second one is the whole intention, I believe, of the TWG when it created the pilot study was precisely to uh, bring the Habal Habal uh, riders into the fold of legal carriage. And uh, this was, this pilot study was meant to invite the Habal Habal to get under the MTPP. As uh, well, in, that, in the past, it was the pilot uh, study. In fact, in our own small way, Your Honor, we tried in Cebu to bring the Habal Habal uh, into our fold. Of course, there was a lot of um, pushback. Uh, but I think that was also part of the no, no, uh, noble intentions of the pilot study. So uh, as far as we're concerned, Your Honor, while we are, um, we are open to this uh, provision, um, we see that there can be a, an actual um, conflict that can arise because of the fact that technology uh, is very accessible. And, um, and if we bring it, this back to the actual um, crux of the pilot study, what it really meant, the, the PWG wanted to create an alternative mode of transportation that would provide a different set of parameters than what we have today. And kami po sa mga pilot study players, I think we're very, uh, we have been trying to develop this even in the culture of the, the, of the motorcycle riders. So um, uh, on the one hand, I, I would, um, I would be very open to any regulations that will be created. But on the other hand, I think the regulation should fit what was originally the intention of the pilot study. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hindi po ba, uh, pag meron ng apps doon sa mga lugar na wala, they will be governed by Section A. Mawawala na sila sa Section B. Hindi ba ganun ang, ang kwan itong... Section 8 na ito. Because there is no regulation governing yung mga lugar na walang apps. Kaya ang tanong ko sa LTFRB, nung sinabi nila burahin ito, anong ilalagay natin na mag-govern doon sa area na yun? Yun yung katanungan ko eh. That is why, uh, dapat yung sitwasyon na yun, dapat may governing provision of law. Ito yung... Uh, section B of uh, paragraph B of Section 8. Ngayon, kung makakomply na na meron na silang apps, then they will be governed by Section A. Hindi ba? Hindi ba LTFRB? Yes, Mr. Chair, we 
agree with you and we submit to you. In the likes thereof, Mr. Chair, then we will be withdrawing our uh, opposition subject to certain qualifications on the wordings, Mr. Chair. Then, uh, may I request that you submit your comments and opposition to Section B, uh, Paragraph B of Section 8, to the committee before Wednesday, para pangkaralan naman ng uh, TWG, yes, whether sir. they will accept it or not. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, just a point po, no, on the, uh, our good friend from uh, Joyride. May we ask, Mr. Chair, because we're very much, we'd like to cover all bases, and there was um, a mention that there is a possible loophole. May we ask, Mr. Chair, on their opinion, for example, ano po yung sinasabi po nila na might be instances covered in B and A? Um, was there a mention? Did I understand that correctly, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, uh, may I direct? Your, your Honor, um, the only loophole I see is that Section A uh, uh, qualifies the areas where uh, it will be under the LTFRB, and these are metropolitan and urbanized areas. There are certain areas that may not be metropolitan or urbanized yet and can have MTPPs, Your Honor. In other words, can, where technology mm. can actually be uh, applicable or uh, accessible. So. Maybe that's an area, Your Honor, uh, that uh, mm. can be can be also looked into by the committee. Mr. Chair, I think that's just a question. The, um, it, we appreciate that it was aptly pointed out. Siguro po, Mr. Chair, as, as he has actually mentioned, the definition in uh, paragraph A says in metropolitan and urbanized areas with an existing and operating MTPPs. I believe uh, it warrants uh, change that it should only be with an existing and operating MTPPs because we are presuming here that metropolitan and urbanized areas would have NTPP. Pero possible rin pala po na, I mean, as we have, as we did actually foresee that there we are anticipating rural areas with existing and operating MTPPs. But by having this distinction by in, in the wording of Article A, um, our good friend from uh, Joyred has properly uh, pointed out that this would be a conflict. So, uh, Mr. Chair, with that, I, we would suggest the removal of in metropolitan and urbanized areas. So it would just, uh, in metropolitan and urbanized, so it will be just areas with an existing and operating MTPPs. In that regard, Mr. Chair, in comparison to B, which is only in areas without, so there's no qualification of urban or rural, so I think that change is much welcome, Mr. Chair. Okay, that settles the matter. Thank you. Before um, we proceed, uh, let me recognize the, the presence of the Honorable Saldi Villa representing the Lone District, province of Sikihor. Welcome po kayo. Mr. Chair, good morning. Uh, may comment, Mr. Yes. Chair? Yes, you have the floor. To, I'm sorry, I, I arrived quite late. Um, I would just like to make a comment pertaining to Section 7 for the standard, standardization and uh, specifications of motorcycle for hire. Well, uh, Mr. Chair, I uh, would like to, uh, if possible, if we, can, if we could include that a motorcycle should be uh, environmental compliance as per the DNR regulation. Uh, all motorcycles must be uh, Euro 3 standards compliance. Because, uh, Mr. Chair, um, it happened before in our uh, dear city of Sambuanga that uh, a certain regulation came out that all motorcycles must be Euro 4 compliance. Ang nangyari naman po, Mr. Chair, wala po tayong motorcyclo na Euro 4. It's only car na may Euro 4. So as per uh, present regulation, uh, since I'm a former master mariner, kapitan po ako ng barko, sabi ko wala naman pinapalit sa barko ang buong makina. Normally to comply with Euro standard, what we're changing is our fuel. Once we arrive in Eurozone, in SECA zone, that prohibits us to use high sulfur uh, fuel, we change over fuel from, fuel from high sulfur to low sulfur fuel in order to meet the Euro regulations. Now pertaining to this, Mr. Chair, it so happened in Sambuanga City in 2019 when um, uh, Euro compliance was uh, emphasized and uh, standardized in our city, na lahat ng tricycle doon na non-Euro for compliance supposedly hindi na makakatakbo. So luckily during the time I was a city councillor, and I'm aware of this uh, regulation, and I fight against uh, 
against, uh, you know, uh, to revise the bill, you know, I really fight to, re to revise the bill para maging, uh, maging uh, may salba natin yung mga kawawang uh, tricycle driver natin. Fortunately, it was approved in uh, Ordinance 555 that was uh, revised by uh, no less than uh, yours truly uh, uh, member Olaso as a member of the city council before. And it, was, and it was approved uh, together with the TWG that was called up for a, a local uh, committee hearing. And uh, it was approved and revised. Sana rin naman dito sa atin, we should emphasize this para kung meron naman tatakbo na motorsiklo, ay hindi po pipigilan dahil non-Euro 4 compliance tayo, uh, non-Euro 3 compliance tayo as per uh, DNR regulation, Mr. Chair. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um. Thank you, uh, Rep. Olaso, for the uh, input. Um, as far as I think the TWG is concerned, meron po tayong Section 7 on the standards. If uh, you would have uh, further suggestions, we'd be open to it. But definitely, we'll keep that in mind po no, sa Section 7 natin. Thank you so much. God bless. Um, for the other resource persons, do we have other questions on Section 8? Uh, we have, uh, may we recognize a representative from Rider Centro, Mr. John J. Chan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, John J. Chan po from Rider Centro. Uh, meron lang po kong uh, dalawang clarification and also a proposal, if you may. Uh, the first clarification, Your Honor, is uh, since earlier na-discuss po natin yung classification uh, ng company kung sila ay MT, MTPP or OEPP, uh, since yung mga companies po ay multi-service in nature and wala naman pong prohibition sa kanila to expand, uh, paano po ang ating magiging guidelines or paano po ang application if the company is under MTPP pero meron silang service na under the jurisdiction of the ICT? Uh, yun po. Uh, the second point, um, since we are talking about franchise, granting a franchise, uh, I assume, uh, Mr. Chair, that this bill reinforce the idea that the delivery riders and also the MC taxi riders are independent contractors. Uh, as of now, uh, meron uh, sa case in point po, uh, yung sa Lazada case, where the Supreme Court declared that the delivery riders of Lazada, in that particular case, is employee and not independent contractor, uh, hindi po uh, ba, Mr. Chair, makaka-apekto po uh, ang bill kung may papasa ito to negate the decision of the Supreme Court or to circumvent that decision. At, uh, hindi po ba makaka yung bill or pag-reinforce natin na independent contractor sila sa mga existing case po ngayon sa NLRC at Court of Appeals? Mr. Chair, sure? may I respond? Uh, Mr. Chair, on the first part po, no, uh, regarding MTPP and OEPP, of course, uh, as per suggestion ng kaibigan po natin dito sa Lala Move, uh, we're just going to refine it. Pero the wisdom of this bill, uh, the rationale, is that uh, definitely yung uh, MTPP would cater to passengers and then the OEPP, which will be expanding to not only business, no, ng sales, would be to dun sa goods and, uh, goods and parcels. With, uh, uh, wala yung diagram. But anyway, uh, supposedly hybrid po siya, no? So these are only respective of the apps and their accreditation. So the ICTC uh, OEVP, sa LTFRB naman si MTPP. But that does not preclude yung ating hybrid instances. For example, we have, um, I would say, we assume, no? Kapag meron siyang MTPP component, they will accredit with the uh, LTFRB. And if they will expand, into a OEPP component, they will then also apply with the ACT. So that app would have a double accreditation, po, supposedly, but that would still shield the riders because iba naman po yung franchise. Now, with that said, po, no, I definitely agree doon sa concern natin sa employment employer. Actually, this would come into it. Uh, um, this is not speaking as TWG, uh, representing the TWG. Po. This is as author of 3142. My questions po tayo dun sa multi-homing, which I will bring up later. Kasi um, it, 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 we can't have it both ways po, no? 
na kung magiging kung walang multi homing pero gusto lang independent contractor pa rin. Parang uh, one sided po yan. But I understand yung fear po natin. Um, we have made significant wins with the jurisprudence on yung Lazada bin or Shopee riders natin. Lazada. But I think we have to what we have discussed in TWG is that we should not. Um, Kasi po yung jurisprudence na yan is still subject on a case-by-case -case basis. As much as uh, it has declared that yung ating mga kapatid na riders doon ay employee ng Lazada, this could easily be circumvented kapag nagbago yung kontrata nila. If they outright explicitly mention sa kontrata na sila ay independent contractor, then mawawala naman talaga po yung win natin doon. Now, with that happens, paano na po yung ating riders that are covered by this? Up to 1,000 pesos off plus 100% free shipping. Add the guard now! Does not mean that my definition of tayo dito na OEPP. We are not saying po naman that they are independent contractors. We are not saying that they are employees or employee. Ang sinasabi lang naman dito is tungkol sa franchise. And we are hopeful that this would be a case. Kasi meron rin naman tayong public utility cases, I believe. For example, bus operators. Although defined naman sila as franchise holders, may employer-employee relationship naman po yung drivers. So I, I, I'm hopeful that this would not change yung ating victory po dun sa Lazada riders. But uh, the notion of the gentleman from Rider Centro is very much noted, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, last uh, follow-up, if you may. Yes, you still have the floor. Okay. Uh, so, uh, meron sana proposal ang uh, Rider Centro po uh, para maging cure or remedy dito sa, sa issue na to and also to cure uh, yung mga upcoming na pwedeng maging issue uh, dito sa problema ng employer-employee relationship. Uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, kaya po may mga nag -e exist na cases and issues dahil hindi po napapangalagaan yung welfare ng mga manggagawa at mga riders. Uh, from the first technical working group, we are not part of uh, that technical working group at ngayon lang po kami nakapasok. And it, uh, nare-respeto naman po na maaring sa sa bill ay hindi na include yung provision naman to protect the riders. So we suggest uh, or we propose uh, Mr. Chair uh, to consider uh, including the Charter of Rights uh, to also also to protect uh, the delivery riders. Uh, uh, in Charter of Rights po ay uh, set of uh, rights para sa mga rider na magiging uh, tulay whether they will be declared employee or they will be declared independent contractor, ay masigura, masisigurado po na masi-safeguard naman po yung kanila mga batayang karapatan. Mr. Chair, on now speaking on behalf of the TWG, may we ask perhaps Rider Center to submit their proposal for yung Charter of Rights? Um, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we already submitted the uh, copy of Charter of Rights as part of our position paper, but uh, as per COMSEC, uh, we will submit a much more updated uh, copy of that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. When can you submit that? Uh, we already submit, uh, Mr. Chair, the soft copy uh, in the COMSEC. You updated? You updated uh, within, within this day. Within the day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> no. Anybody else who want to? Mr. Chair? Um, yes. Comment no, again, no, no, no. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, hindi naman sa tinututul ko to. I'm very happy na magkakaroon na to be legalized, no? malilegalized to. But we're also having problem with a certain uh, cities like Sambuanga, highly urbanized cities, but uh, things that we have to take consideration with. As in Sambuanga City po, if you go from uh, 0 to 7 kilometers, patag po. But more than 7 kilometers, bulubunduki na yan. So, the, uh, the, yun ang problema namin. The means of uh, transportation in that area, talagang ginagamit po is motorcycle or uh, habalabal. Now, if we will take consideration na pupunta to sa Sambuanga City, as of now, our tricycle population is sa 7,000, yung legal na tumatakbo. But yung illegal, they are more than 5,000. I think uh, it was, uh, uh, I think uh, what was approved by the law, we are only allowed by the local government unit to have at least 5,000. E sumobra na nga, nasa 7,000 na po 
uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, parang ganun yun. Ito e, ngayon, uh, maglalagay po tayo ng motor, uh, no, uh, like yun na uh, service provider sa Sambuanga City. Hindi ko tinututul gusto ko, provided that uh, we have to put a certain uh, limitation. Kasi pong lalagyan natin to ng ano, we will fully legalize it. Ang mangyayari po, paano po yung mga tricycles ngayon na tumatakbo na mamamatay din yung ano nila, operations nila. Kasi wala nang sasakin ng tricycle. Lahat magmamotor na yan. Now, um, considering na the roads in some mga cities really narrow, we're still in a, in a span of widening, widening it. Eh, pagdada po po yung motorsiklo doon, wala na. Hindi na talaga makakatakbo. As of now, uh, people, you know, in Sambuanga City going to West Coast uh, towards my uh, district, it will take you one hour and a half to two hours bago ka marating sa pinaroroonan mo. Well, going also to the district of, uh, of uh, District uh, 2 of Congressman Manix Dalipe, ganun din po, tumatagal po dahil napakanaro yung road namin at saka marami talagang sasakyan. So pagpapasok pa yung motorsiklo, uh, without any limitations, magkakaproblema po. Kaya sabi ko, uh, may request kung pwede po, I'm uh, calling uh, the Honorable Chair and uh, the author of this uh, bill, kung pwede po, i-regulate natin sa area na yun, lagyan natin ng konting limitations. Most likely, 1,000 motorcycles. Uh, that would be good enough for highly urbanized city. And then we'll classify also sa mga like Sibugay, uh, Del Sur, Del Norte, kasi mountainous area din, Basilan, Hulo, Tawi-Tawi, Bulubundukin din. So I think we have to consider that and I'm asking the committee to take reconsideration for this, Mr. Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, Your Honor, if, if, we, if we read the uh, last paragraph of Section B, uh, of uh, Paragraph B of Section 8, the, uh, the last paragraph, the LTFRB shall approve the routes and the number of units that may be allowed to operate as may be recommended by the LGU in accordance with the uh, local transportation route plan and shall provide for uniform guidelines as to the standards of operation of motorcycles for hire in consultation with the LGUs and stakeholders. So, nasa, nasa, nasa LGU na at saka LTFRB yung pag-regulate nito? Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, I may be agreeable with that, but, uh, you know, as you know, election is past approaching. Now, what if the LGU sasabi nila, okay, no limits, pasok lang, pasok lang. So, on my side, uh, since we're uh, creating this, though, dapat lagyan natin ng ano, kunting limitations in that certain area. Kasi po, pag Pinayagan ng ni Mayor at kasabot si LTFRB, in-approve lang lahat. So lahat na magmumotor sa Sambuanga City or whatever areas, that's my point of view there. Kasi, you know, election is ano, pas approaching. So let's take consideration to that also. Kaya I think we better set borders here, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Chair? You're recognized. One. Most no. respectfully to our colleague, si uh, Rep. Olaso, we agree that this is a concern talaga po, and that's why in the TWG that they as properly mentioned by uh, as aptly mentioned by the chairman that the LTFRB and LG will be coordinating with yung LPTRP but yung question naman po nung kung si mayor mismo yung magre-release I would make the statement na anli na po dito I think that would be a the reason why we leave it to the LG is that there is the presumption that they would know what's best for their city now, po, if they will be lifting the limits uh, as con it against the LPTRP, baka that's a question na election concern na po yun sa mayor. Baka siya na po yung kaila magkakaproblema. So, um, yung to have the limitations imposed on by law would, might be inflexible po. No? Yun na po yung stand ng TWG, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Chair, I agree with that. Um, but uh, provided that, no, like tricycles, uh, I think it's by the, by law na ang DILG, they allow only to a certain tricycles in Sambuanga City. Yes. Batas ang nagpapatupad noon. So I think, let's put this up in motorcycle also. Kasi kung hindi kawawa, as of now in Sambuanga City, the tricycles are already un uncountable. There are more than 12,000, 7,000 operating legally, but more than 4,000, almost 5,000 are operating illegally. 
pumasok pa itong mga e-trike na walang <laughs> lisensya. So, let's take consideration about this matter. Kasi, uh, syempre, uh, it may not happen in Manila, but it may happen in our city. Nangyari na po. So, I'm just sharing whatever is my experience because I've been a barangay kagawat before I become a city councilor and before I become a congressman. Now that I'm a congressman, I would just like to share whatever is the sentiments of our uh, LGU at this, uh, malalaman natin anong problema. Uh, I'm not here to go against. I love this proposal and I, in fact, I would like to become a co-author uh, of this, if you'll allow me, but uh, just put a consideration to that. Kasi kawawa rin po yung mga tricycle drivers nangungutang pa ngayon Kasi po, yung uh, uh, Euro 3 compliance that was approved in uh, 2021, uh, eh, ngayon pa lang sila nag, ano, nagpabahit sa mga utang sa motorsiklo. Then pag dapuan to ng mga ano, uh, motorcycles, patay na. Paano silang makaka-recover po? As of now, they're complaining a lot. Kaya nga, uh, nilalapitan ako ulit and that's why I really attend this ano. Kaya to voice out whatever is the sentiments of our people uh, from Sambuanga City po. Most especially the tricycle drivers who are operating legally. So that's, that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, given that input po, no, there's a suggestion to have hard limits in our law. May we ask siguro our uh, representative from the tricycle sector. Uh, Mr. Chair, saan po ba nakalagay sa... Um, yung hard limits sa ating batas for tricycles. Is this in the local government code? Sa amin po kasi sa TODA, sa buong Pilipinas. Actually, sa palag to sinasabi, no? may reklamo na pong pumasok sa akin ngayon lang, Pagadian City. Meron ng motorcycle taxi. Even they are not approved. Maxims is there. Kaya nga sinasabi ko, uh, pinipilit namin na Ano, na wag tayo magka problema. We are not against sa motorcycle taxi. Pero gaya na sabi ko kay Congressman Olaso from uh, second district, I think, ng uh, Sampuanga. Kasi it's, ay, first, no? Kay, uh, Mr. Chair? Uh, Delipi. Ang akin lang po, uh, ito na ang problema, Mr. Chair. Mr. Most Chair. respectfully. Uh, sir, sorry po, no? Um, I understand yung sentiment po, no? Pero we're already, we're on the issue of whether the, the wisdom of Congress to enact hard limits po sa batas mismo. So I was asking po a technical question. San po nakasaad na merong hard limits po yung tricycles? Which provision specifically po? Actually po sa local government ko sa 7160, kami lang po, uh, ang local government po ang nagsasabi sa kanila kung ilan lang at uh, kami po Mr. bilang Chair? mga association ang nagsasabi kung sobra po ba kami o kulang pa. Uh, so uh, the LGC, local government code, empowers you but yung limitation is de defined not in the law. It is after. So, Mr. Chair, I think uh, drawing comparison apples to apples, wala man pong hard limit yung LGC. I am of the opinion that there should be no hard limits either in this bill. I think that uh, it is proper and more flexible to leave it to the wisdom of the LGUs po, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, my comment. Uh, correct. Uh, we have to give it to the wisdom of the LGU. Provided that, uh, as per ano nga, sa DILG memorandum circular, I just could not remember, no, I'm sorry, I was not able to research that, but uh, as far as I remember, we are only allowed to have 7,000 tricycles in Sambonga City for highly urbanized city. But if you are more than 7,000, hindi na po pwede yan. But amenably, nasa 14,000 na yung tricycles sa Sambonga City po. Ngayon, Meron pang abal-abal na existings, uh, exist in existence kaysa sa Sambuanga City, which is, uh, to tell you honestly, they are operating illegally. So ayaw naman natin mag-operate sila ng illegally, but ang point lang natin, uh, siguro, we will just put a limit as per, ano, as per uh, DILG regulation, sundan natin, but we cannot have 7,000 abal-abals, siguro not more than 1,000. Uh, this will limit to that area for uh, highly urbanized city like Sambuanga City, Basilan, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi. If we'll take consideration, that consider the entire Region 9. Because the entire Region 9, yung means of transportation talaga is motorcycle. Wala naman dun mga jeep or mga bus na ano talaga uh, na, na bumabiyay. Ang hirap po sa bundok, uh, ang hirap sa probinsya namin. It's not unlike Metro Manila. We can utilize jeepneys, we can utilize MRTs. In our place, we don't have those. Ang ano lang talaga, tanging services, motorcycle. Ang kaso lang din, considerably, yung tricycle, hindi makakakit ang bundok. That's why everybody is uh, riding abalabal, Mr. Chair. So, yun lang sa akin, just limit the, ano, 
yun ano natin in uh, motorcycle operations in Sambuanga City. Not only Sambuanga City, maybe in other parts of the regions kasi kung dadamihan po natin yan, what will happen next, it will also fall down to education. Ngayon yung mga binatilyo doon, ang sagot to, bakit hindi ka nakaaral? Ah, maayo na ni, okay na ni magkabalabal ko kay naanak kwarta. May pera na ako dito kaysa mag-aral. So, they, you know, parang discouraging mag-aral yung mga bata. Nag-aabal-abal na lang sila pang kabuhayan nila. So, yun, yun point of view ko lang. Yun, just put a boundaries. And as per, ano, uh, set it up to the ILG, whatever is the regulation and commendation for them na anong gustong gawin, then uh, you just follow them, Mr. Chair. Thank you. DILG, uh, are you here? Good morning, Mr. Chair, and to the yes. uh, members of the committee. Does the DILG uh, concur that there's a limit for motor uh, uh, or for tricycles in each and every uh, LGU? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, my apologies, but we don't have the data right now. But Hindi, uh, meron ba kayong uh, circular memorandum or what? na nagre-regulate ng number of uh, tricycles to operate in a certain LGU jurisdiction? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, as far as my, uh, as far as I know, the DILG ha has no uh, memorandum limiting the uh, number of tricycles in uh, certain LGUs, Your Honor. And would you agree with me that that is up to the local government unit? Uh, we agree, Your Honor, that yes. uh, it is uh, we we submit to the wisdom of the local government units. Yes, uh, that is what is happening also in my area. Yes, Your Honor. Yung LGU, uh, yung uh, administration na nagdedetermine kung ano yung kwan. Uh, Di ba? Uh, now, on the issue of competition, hindi ba ang business talaga is competition? Kaya, uh, I do not see the wisdom of a limit natin. Ilalagay natin doon sa batas na for a certain area, ganito ang number ng motors, uh, ng tricycles or what? Or motorcycles. Uh, I think uh, uh, the chair of the TWG, uh, this thing should have been discussed sa the TWG. Hindi eh. dito eh. Uh, Madidelay ang ang kwan nito. Mr. Chair, um, on this matter, the TWG, I believe, um, I could be corrected by the Comsec, pero we were unanimous naman po that this should be decided by the LGU, Mr. Chair. Yeah, but the the, the request of the Honorable Olaso is there must be a cap to be provided by the law. Yun ang kanyang punto eh. Well, Mr. Chair, on the part of the TWG, I think uh, as much as we respect the uh, opinion of our good co uh, colleague, uh, we will still stand by not having hard caps on the proposed bill, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, naintindihan po namin yung competition. That's why hindi kami tumatanggi dyan. Ang amin lang, Mr. Chair, kaya kami humingi ng capping because ayaw namin mag-away-away doon sa dulo. Dahil po nangyayari na this time. Kaya ang amin, hayaan natin tumakbo ang motorcycle taxi pero bigyan natin ng regulasyon. Ilan lang ba dapat? Kara po hindi naman tamaan yung iba. Kasi hanap buhay po ito eh. Kung baga, dati nang nandiyan ng tricycle, pinagbigyan natin silang tumakbo dyan. Then sila naman ngayon maaagawa ng pasahero, magugutom din sila. At the end of the day, lahat kami guto may away pa. Yun lang po Mr. Chair. Wala po kaming against sa motorcycle taxi. It was good for us kasi nakakatulong. Pero sana bigyan po ng tamang sukat bawat lugar na lalabasan nito. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes. Uh, Ronald Gustilo po from Digital Pinoy's. From? From Digital Pinoy's po. Sige. Sir, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, yung isang ano lang po kung bakit po uh, may push din po for capping, no? Yung isa po kasing magiging danger kung wala pong limit, yung uh, dami po nung riders na papapasukin natin. Uh, magkakaroon po ng oversupply 
eventually po yung mga riders po mismo within among themselves magkakaroon po sila ng kumbaga magiging uh, mas pahirapan po para sa kanila yung magkaroon ng booking kasi kung sobra-sobra po sila versus doon po sa demand ng uh, passengers mas marami po yung riders na matitenga therefore uh, imbis po na mabigyan po natin sila ng opportunity na makapaghanap buhay po eh talaga po ng uh, uh, ma mas malelesen pa nga po actually kasi nag uh, nag-invest po sila for them na makapag-operate as a motorcycle taxi rider or or a, a parcel delivery uh, service pero wala pong masyadong makukuhang booking kasi nga sobrang dami naman po ng mga riders yun lang naman po yung apprehension po sa bahagi po namin Mr. Chair Let me ask the LTFRB uh, The chair but just left for a while but if I may say so your honor Okay um, the public service act provides for a mechanism in order to determine public need. In fact, it's one of the requirements out of three that has to be proven in an open and public hearing. So public need is presented, the LT LTPRP will be presented, and all parties will be heard in order for them to present counter evidence to establish the exact demand necessary. Uh, this is true for tricycles, buses, uh, this is true for jeepneys as well, Your Honor. It's a tried and tested formula already. And there is already a mechanism for appeal in the event that the ruling of the LTFRB is wrong. So the possibility of, of being, um, of working together with the LGU is, um, is uh, um, um, neutralized by the open, open public hearing concept um, envisioned by the Public Service Act, Your Honor. And to date, I do not see any other procedure as transparent as that, Your Honor that would be open to everybody for them to be able to ventilate their case. Because to put a cap at this early stage or other would might be premature considering that uh, there are so many factors of consideration in determining demand. Uh, population is one, the need in a certain area is one, and all this is a matter of evidence that has to be proven. And maybe this is not the forum for this, so Your Honor, if I may, um, of course, subject to the approval of my chairman, is uh, to maintain the uh, position of the technical working group and not put a cap. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Chair, uh, just to clarify, po, no? uh, I think the discussion is being veered off. Um, just to clarify the position of the TWG, we are for limits, as mentioned in uh, paragraphs A and B. On paragraph A, it does say there that in determining the number of franchises to be issued, the LTFRB shall take into consideration the LPTRP, etc. And on sub and section B, uh, the LTFRB shall approve the routes and the number of units yeah. that may be allowed. So, Mr. Chair, I think there's no question on the fact of whether or not there will be limits, because there will be limits. But the question now, I think, that's posited forward is whether it should be in the law, and uh, uh, whether it should be in the law or it should be uh, it will be determined afterwards. So, I think, Mr. Chair. But again, I re we remain in position and we thank the LTO for their support that uh, the version of the TWG will stand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, last yes. point. I think, Mr. Chair, the best thing and the best approach that we can do here is uh, pertaining to limitations. Um, what What's best we can do is, uh, let's say, for a highly urbanized city, we'll uh, put a limit of 2,000, for example. Then for first class, uh, second class, third class municipalities, 500, 500. Alibawa, ganun. Now, provided that into the law, ang lagyan natin dan, subject to ano subject to reconsideration if the LGU sees that we need to increase the operations of motorcycle in a certain area they can increase bound uh, to ordinance gagawa sila ng ordinansa that they will increase the limits uh, of the operations of motorcycle but in the law maybe we can do in that thing now we will limit for uh, a certain uh, amount na pwedeng tatakbo yung motor sa kalye, but we will give the power to the LGU. Silang magpa-finalize to operationalize because I agree, even though the TWG was here, it was discussed in the TWG, pero I don't know if we have visited every LGU, every municipality in our country. Yun lang naman po eh. Kasi magiging problema to. So no limitations. As per L uh, LGU decision, anong decision ng LGU and LTFRB, they have to coincide. 
So dito sa atin, sa batas natin, we put a boundary. O hanggang dito tayo, but may, uh, I don't know how to do it, I'm not a lawyer, pero we will put an extra uh, technical term na we can increase, the LGU can increase the limits of the uh, motorcycles in their city provided that as per uh, uh, local ordinance approval, Mr. Chair. Ganun po, Mr. Chair. I think that's the best thing, Mr. Chair. I think there's no need for that. If you read the local government code, it is there. The power of the local government or the Sangunian over the operations of tricycles. Yeah. Kaya ganun din ang binibigay natin dito eh, sa batas na ito. Uh, uh, if we compare it with the uh, tricycles, section 447, the powers, duties, functions, and compensation, uh, the Sangunian Bayan, as the legislative body of the municipality, shall enact ordinances, approve resolutions, and appropriate funds for the general welfare. We go to uh, paragraph 3, uh, subparagraph 6, subject to the guidelines prescribed by the Department of Transportation and Communications, regulate the operations of tricycles and grant franchises for the operation thereof within the ter territorial jurisdiction of the municipality. So, binibigay na nga natin sa kanila eh. Okay, so, that's Mr. up Chair. to them because the rationale for that is mas alam nila yung sitwasyon dun sa lugar nila. Sa lugar nila. Correct. I uh, think that is the rationale of the provision of the local government code. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, my apology. Uh, I mentioned a while ago it was in as per DILG regulations, hindi pala sa DILG, it was in the city ordinance limitations. Uh, I may have been forgotten about that because yes. medyo matagal na rin. It's in the city ordinance, the limitations of tricycle. So I think we can do the same thing pala. No problem, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. The Chair would acknowledge the presence of the Honorable uh, Joey Sartes Salceda, the Chairman of the Committee on Ways and Means, uh, representing the second district province of Albay, the data-driven legislator. Welcome po kayo. So, uh, we have passed 12.30. Uh, since we have agreed that we uh, suspend 12.30, uh, 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 the Honorable uh, Plato is recognized. Mr. Chair, uh, may I move to, for the suspension? of this uh, substitute bill regarding uh, the regulation, providing regulation for the operation of motorcycles for hire to give time for our guests and our colleagues to have lunch. And let's continue at uh, one o'clock. Yes, uh, as agreed upon, Your Honor, before I approve uh, your motion, uh, we will have time to eat and uh, we will tackle uh, agenda uh, B and C in this afternoon's hearing. Uh, we suspend the uh, hearing in so far as uh, the substitute bill for motorcycle for height is concerned. Uh, do I hear any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Uh, the hearing is suspended up to 1.30 this afternoon.